okay apiksha all good apiksha can you hear me the haryana chapter of the indian institute of architects who have co-hosted today's event with us before we go any further just to give everyone a brief idea of how special this event is a few years ago at i we realized that even though the issues and the concerns of sustainability are rapidly gaining global relevance they did not somehow reach the practice of the profession particularly in our country and it is at that grassroots level at the practice level where that initiative is most required to be taken so we approached the priya council who understood our concerns and worked with us to modulate their awareness programs and training programs the way they existed to address the needs of the practicing architects practicing architects particularly in the age group of 35 to 50 seem to be so involved and so busy in setting up their bread and butter that there is hardly any time to address these concerns which is where we at iia griha wanted to take the whole idea or the whole issue of green buildings so we did a small sample event which is almost 2 years ago right which was highly successful post which griha and i northern chapter signed an mou for promotion of such events under this mou this is our third edition of the awareness and we have already done a training program a 3 day detailed training program post which we are proud to say that nearly 12 or 13 of our 30 participants succeeded in clearing the griha cp exam and are now certified griha professionals post this we continued our process but somewhere as it did everywhere the pandemic sort of derailed us and the whole process was halted for almost a year today is our first post pandemic event as also our comeback event so we are very happy to announce that within this calendar year as will be informed to you by griha we have two more awareness events and one training event already lined up up till the month of june so almost every month we are going to be doing one event now gradually we will try and move to in person events so we will be very happy and delighted to meet every one of our attendees which we are physically unable to do today before we start the main event i am very happy to announce that we have two of our successful participants from the last training event architect rishabh jain who is a young and budding practicing professional and a landscape architect working mainly on government projects and a senior member of the fraternity architect lavesh kansal who has more than 25 years of experience on multifaceted projects good morning rishabh Oh, good, good morning, morning Lavish. Good morning, Lavish. Good morning. Good morning. Before I go any further, go any further uh, can you please just mute for a moment? I just like to inform all the attendees that you may please feel free to put your questions and answers in the chat box. We will, as per the flow of events, take up your questions. Also, kindly address your questions to whoever you. may be asking them to the sponsor has a separate presentation and griha has its own presentations as well as the architect who are presenting the griha projects are presenting their own so kindly specify whom you would like to address your question to yes i now open the floor to rishab rishab ji and laveshi yeah hi uh so like i i think i attended the griha event uh, organized i think that was the first griha event organized by iia uh, with the with in collaboration with iia so the overall experience i feel was very good uh, uh, rishi my small correction actually it was the first yeah. training event yeah. as a training event it yeah, was the yeah, first yeah. one first three day yeah. training yeah. event yeah. for the griha cp exam so the over, yes. i think the overall experience was very good because uh, i don't think we uh, actually stuck more to griha but the since the trainers who were coming had a very holistic views about all the thing so they were actually able to tell us ki why those, why such policies are done and like why the criteria why the criteria are set 
and what are the things that have been that have that that we look while setting the criteria so we actually not only gain the idea about what the criteria are because that that you can i think, I think everybody can read in the gria cp manual but it's a, I, think, i think the experience was more more holistic because you can actually get to know ki what's the what's the concept behind those things and how actually we can make more green buildings uh, more innovative and since griha also has a point for innovation so i think that leaves a good amount of space for thinking uh, for thinking lavesh ji what are your first thoughts on this as rightly said by rishab dan also keep it's a basically eye opener to me also uh, after getting a class after 25 years <laughs> from college so uh, it's a totally uh, revisiting the college also uh, total the sy systems which were taught uh, earlier in my college days are been again introduced in three that three day event and all the trainers are so fantastically explain the things uh basically i also uh, enjoyed uh, the training session because my son is also uh, studying in college so uh, revisiting the konis burger book and uh, many nbcs uh, chapters to get through the uh, cp exam also so it's totally fabulous experience and uh, now after getting uh, cleared the cp exams uh, cp exam so uh, my design uh, uh, you can say my design approach has changed also uh, i i am al always thinking of getting something green to my projects and to the benefit of client and also a nation so it's very good uh, and every sh one should at least uh, uh, join the training whether it cleared or not that's all i can say yeah lavesh i think pointed out to completely correctly like while designing so even though like the, you know the in the government sector clients do not directly ask for griha rating but we know ki like you know five years down the line all the projects in the india will be either griha or lead or igb uh, some sort of some sort of rating will be done so we in the back of the mind we have an idea ki okay now i know guys since i'm a griha cp so if the building has to made has to be made griha com compliant so i try to aim ki ki at least the building will get three star which is like you know almost equivalent to lead uh, platinum since we have done lead buildings also griha buildings also so we try to make the buildings uh, in the back of the mind we can we can actually back calculate okay we can score this much points over here this much points over here so that you know in due course of time the buildings are more sustainable and um, it's it's more it's it's more comfortable for the occupants to actually uh, stay in, stay mm -hmm. in. and one more thing that i think i no, discovered in the last one okay yeah. uh, one no, more thing that I, yes yes please mm -hmm. uh yeah and uh, one more thing that i discovered in last one and a half year between uh, i I've, i've been working on various uh, griha uh, Gri projects also lead projects also so you know there was always a question in my mind ki whether i should go for griha cp or lead lead ap lead ap in all those exams there's always a there's a there's a kind of competition there's a new kind of rating now bell rating also but that's i think a completely different kind of rating so uh, one basic thing that i found the difference was uh, in uh, griha is more indian like you know it's more suitable for uh, indian context as compared to lead so that's where i found ki matlab griha is more uh, i think uh, uh, getting griha three star is equivalent to getting almost lead platinum so that's the, like that's a kind of difference here we are talking about and griha is i think far more comprehensive far better for indian context as compared to lead so that's what i feel in case i think many of the people who were at indies over here might have this question okay why should I, why should i not go for griha and not for lead and all those kind of things so i had that had that question and i think i was able to you know find the answers answer in the last one year uh, yes sir so i think uh, the griha council will be happy to hear that but uh, other than that may i substantiate what you're talking about uh, because uh, the government of india is actually making ecpc mandatory state by state you know they are going to and they are in the process of doing that right 
to my last information, I think almost about 13 to 15 states in India have ECBC mandatory. I think the Griha people will be able to tell us better. And Griha in their energy sections is primarily based on the ECBC requirements, right? So in fact, that segment, right, is actually catering to the mandatory requirements. So ECBC will eventually become as mandatory as your fire sanctions or, you know, your, your structure stability sanctions, right? So we are in fact, by uh, sort of uh, taking Griha to the practicing professional, we're going in the right direction. Because eventually we are looking at almost all of these things becoming mandatory. See, they all start as a, an idea or as a concept, which is optional, right? But mm. eventually it's a need of the hour, right? Well, what we realize is that, that all the Griha concepts or whatever they are aiming at are basic, optimal and efficient design. Even if we don't use the words green or sustainable there, right? It is just efficiently using all the resources that are available to us which I think somewhere down the line during our practices, we have sort of, it's gone out of our mind. It's not there in the front of our mind. What would you say, Laveji, on this? As you rightly said, <clears throat> just give me a minute. You continue, I, I just bet. Uh, Richard, what do you, it's, it's, what it's, is your comment on this? The fact that ECBC is getting mandatory and yes. I think I think ECBC was already mandatory for government buildings. Like they had to achieve the, uh, that uh, that uh, that I am not sure about this, but I think it was already mandatory, but not for the private sector. So, but now the government uh, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can see ECBC is a subset of uh, Griha because Griha is far more you know comprehensive. Right. And EC, if you are if you are covering Griha, then you are automatically covering uh, ECBC. And in the last one one and a half year, we have seen that a lot of uh, state governments are giving. A lot of incentives to green building, not ECBC, not not just ECBC, but Griha, yes. al Griha also, like the increasing the FR and all those things. So that is incentivizing all these private developers to also go for such kind of ratings. And I think the last one one and a half year, there have been a lot of a lot of like government works in which they are actually asking the existing facility facility to get a rating, like a, you know a existing building rating kind of thing. So I think there have been far more projects right, right. Absolutely. people aiming to get an existing building rating as compared to a new building rating. So like, you know, if, uh, looking at the trend, if such trend goes and this becomes a you know, thing in the market, then the, uh, every, every person who's making a new building will, would also like to go for the rating. The Griha, Griha rating or, you know, ECBC rating. ECBC is, I think, more uh, more targeted towards government government buildings while Griha, and Griha is more targeted towards a Largest, larger uh, section of the society, which is, you know, uh, private and as well as uh, public also. Uh, yes, Laveshi, your opinion on this? We missed you at that point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, uh, the ECBC uh, is basically a part of GRIHA only, you can say. Because if you do GRIHA, you have to compliance with ECBC also. And uh, GRIHA is much more exhaustive and uh, ECBC basically deals with the part of energy section only, basically. Right, right. And Griha looks on the overall total of whole whole view like that. And the most important aspect in the uh, Griha is the uh, innovations part and uh, that uh, should uh, impact analysis and that uh, we have a chapter two where uh, where everything uh, is based on design approach you have and for uh, designing your any project which uh, on the way gets compliance with all engineering calculations basically ECBC goes for engineering calculations only. Uh, so I think Griha, Griha adopts ECBC basically you can say or ECBC comes out from Griha only. So you have to go for a Griha only. It covers everything in, of the project. Yes, so that is so. Eventually, those things which will become mandatory are already covered. So you can say you're partly yeah. Griha compliant. You know, when you're yeah. when you're working on these kind of things. Yeah. And very interestingly, may I add that you know Griha is very progressive in terms of how they take out the next versions, right? I have been yeah. associated with a new version in the development of the manual since global concerns are now addressing water and the scarcity of water more than energy. In fact, yeah, yeah. so uh, the new manual actually lays more stress and in fact, more credit weightage and everything like that, right? 
So basically, um, I think we have a lot to talk about and uh, we can go on. Uh, but since I have a restriction of time, right? Uh, I think we should move on to the main session right now. It was lovely talking to you, Rishabji and Laveshji. Thank, Thank you. you so much once again for uh, enriching us with your presence today. And uh, please join us throughout the day. Sure. And uh, perhaps in future also, I would love to have you in closer partnership working with us for development of the next uh, uh, programs. So uh, may I now invite Mr. Amit Pandit, who is AVP Sales at Wigwam Savitri Woods. They are our sponsors for today's event. Uh, good morning, Mr. Pandit. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Archana. Am I audible? Mr. Pandit, yeah. yes, you are very, very clear and audible. Okay. Uh, you would like to make your presentation? Yes. Uh, you may please take the floor. Yeah. Close. Yeah, it's clear, visible. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, a very good morning to everyone from Big Bang Ply and uh, the team of Savitri Woods. It's a privilege to address such a profound group of architects. And I would like to thank IIA Northern Chapter, the Griha Council and the IIA Haryana Chapter for giving us this opportunity. Uh, Wig Bam Ply is a brand from the house of Savitri Woods India Private, Private Limited. And Savitri Woods are in this business since 2003. So we have successfully completed 18 years and we are going very strong. To be successful, one needs to have control on raw material, good infrastructure and a very good and modern manufacturing unit. We at Savitri Woods are blessed to have all three at one place. Not only this, we are also based at the heart of the place where the raw material action takes place, which is Hoshiarpur. And this gives us an immense edge over others. We have raw materials like poplar and eucalyptus, which are key to our product manufacturing. And it's all available in abundance in Hoshiarpur uh, and around. We are currently, play, uh, you know, uh, we have a reach of in at least 22 states and union territories, which gives us almost 70% coverage, more than 70% coverage of the whole of the country. Now, what are the infrastructure that we have, which, which gives us an edge? We have raw material and procurement unit at Hoshiarpur. We are the leading engineered veneer manufacturers in the country. And we have a very modern, technically advanced plywood manufacturing unit. And all these three are in Hoshiarpur, which gives us seamless operations and ease of operations and ensures we manufacture ply which are consist consistent in quality. Now, what is the motto of Wigwam? In Wigwam, what we want to deliver to our customers is apply as it should be. We want to offer remarkable quality at a very effective value. And we want to deliver a promise to make our customers homes and in turn their lives very, very happy and very, very healthy because we are also very, very environment friendly. We are a large country with a large population and every segment has a requirement, a need, an application which is very different from each other. So what we have done in, in Big Bam is after a thorough research, we designed our product range in such a manner so that we can actually reach out to each and every customer segment. We have a top uh, brand, which is Big Bam Visor, which is a structural ply with fire retardant properties in it and a very high uh, marine properties in it, which comes with a three years money time, uh, three times money back warranty. Then we also have a ply, which is contender which is a fire retardant with 
100% money back warranty and then we have a termite proof ply which is club plus and also a hardwood economical ply range which is by the name excel then we also have to keep in, keeping in mind the future we also have a range which is fabricate hdp and mdp which is actually a delight for the oems it is like a dream come proof ply for the oems and then in the fabricate range we also have a club and a gold series which is a very economical economically priced a uh, modern ply so why wigwam what is the manufacturing process in wigwam we start the manufacturing process starts from the peeling veneer generation drying of the cores composing of the veneers into 8 by 4 we have core composers so all our veneers are fully core composed then the mat ply assembling then we have a cycle which we a process which we call tetra cycle process which basically comprises of cold press hot press then we do a calibration then phase overlaying and then again cold press and hot press finally we do the testing we do the finishing of the products by stamping and then the product is ready to go for dispatch so what do we get out of all this uh, you know uh, uh, modern technologies that we have in our plant the process that we follow for manufacturing of ply we get ply which has very 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 minimal core overlaps and core gaps the mechanized composition of core uh, core veneers we use a full size core and panel which gives us a edge over uh, others we use a technology which is called finger joint so what it does is the it allows the ply to have very very less joint therefore giving the ply a superior strength cross lamination now the dimensional stability comes from the cross lamination and our core, uh, ply our core composed therefore the uh, you know the grains that you see are all in straight line there is a uniform resin spread which gives the ply a uniform uh, a stronger bonding and a stability and what is important is in ply industry there is a lot of wastage of raw material the enter process that we follow in manufacturing of our ply ensures that the wastage is very very nominal which is nearly zero so that's a very very big advantage that we have so what is the tetra cycle process that i was talking of it is a cold press and a hot press then phase overlaying and then again cold press and a hot press what does the cold press do the cold press gives us equal distribution of adhesive so the bonding is very strong equal distribution of moisture and therefore what happens is it gives strong very strong stability to the ply and a very strong bonding the hot press gives us heavy uniform pressure and it allows the temperature to flow across the length and breadth of the cores and the panel therefore the stability and the bonding and the quality of the ply is superior and all these things that we do is not done manually everything is automatic and we ensure that the minimum manual intervention therefore we use a auto loader for loading and unloading during the process just to ensure that the quality that we want to deliver through the process remains undiluted now what is the calibration this is a very good technology the calibration gives us uniform thickness so what i mean by uniform thickness is you can use a vernier caliper and and measure across the length and breadth of the ply you will get very very minimum almost negligible thickness variation what it also does is gives a undulance free surface therefore it's a, a influencer or a carpenter contractor's delight because they get a finishing because of uniform surface because of no uh, uniform thickness they get a finishing which is dream come true which is wow it also because of the uniform thickness gives us better edge banding and it's very very easy for application our ply comes impregnated on the, on the surfaces with microbicides now what does this microbicides do that we impregnate on the surface it kills 99.99% of virus and bacteria 
So therefore, our ply, the entire range of Wigwam ply is antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. So there are no health hazards for the people, for the customers who are buying our ply, nor for the influencer who is using it at the time of application. So it's a very, very safe interior application. And all this is tested and certified by Biotech Testing Services Mumbai, and we are certified ISO 21702. Not only this, we at Savitri Woods, we are extremely cautious and we every step we take in manufacturing and upgradation is to ensure that we do everything as per the environment norms and not by harming the environment. So all the entire range of fly that we have is E1 emission standard, conforms to E1 emission standards. And apart from this, the raw material that we procure, we ensure that we procure from 100% plus uh, plantation timber, thereby conforming to the green building standards. Not only this, we also educate, upgrade, to upgrade our farmers through agroforestry education program. And also we keep on upgrading ourselves internally and externally in our systems, in our processes, in the manufacturing developments to ensure that we constantly give our emission free plywood. So what is our community? What is our community and what do we hold as a responsibility that we would like to do towards our community? Savitri Woods have more than 1000 plus employees and we are spread over 22 states and union territories. There are 100 plus top fabricators and OEMs in the country who are attached to us. More than 1000 architects, designers across the country who are uh, attached to Wigwam and more than a lakh satisfied customers. We believe in working together and ensuring safety of every individual who is directly or indirectly attached to us. So what we deliver is happier home and happy customer without any health hazards, without any fear of getting viruses and also using a ply, which is very, very modern, absolutely made from 100% plantation uh, products and a process which we follow in manufacturing to give a very unique product result to the end customer. So what we have is we have got immense love and support from our loyal customers since this time we started. We promise to constantly upgrade ourselves in every field of our operations to provide ethical, ecological, and environment friendly solutions to our customers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Pandit. It was wonderful to hear about your unique products. Uh, my very quick question to you, right? Uh, and if anybody else has a question, may you kindly please type it in the chat box and address it to all the panelists and attendees so that Mr. Pandey can also read it. And so can the other people associated from Vigwam Savitri Woods who are also attending today's event, right? Uh, in a small, just in a capsule, may I just ask you, Mr. Pandey, how would you claim that your product is a green product since that is actually the context of the day, right? Yeah, uh, well, Archana, it's like this. We use 100% plantation uh, wood timber for our raw material usage. Plus we are con we confirm by the E1 standards. Also we ensure that there are no health hazards because of the macrocytes that we impregnate on the surface. Therefore, all these three you know, features that we use in our manufacturing process gives us the advantage of being a green building certified product. So we have uh, one question from our audience. Uh, architect Aditya Kumar Singh okay. uh, from SMVDU, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, would like to ask a question. 
and uh, I'm sure it is visible in your question answer box also, yeah, but I will just read it aloud. He is asking yeah, whether it is microbiocide termite resistant. He is looking for its application in wet areas in a building, for example, bathrooms and kitchens. Yeah, we have a product by the name uh, Club Plus, which is also micro, which obviously is microbiocides impregnated on the surface, uh, uh, surface, and also it's a termite proof product. So he can very well use our Club Plus product. Uh, and uh, there's one more uh, question. Uh, what is the calibration that you were mentioning? If you could just uh, explain it here. The cali you were talking about the product being calibrated. Yeah. See the How is it calibrated? The calibration, what it does is, it, it, is, a, it is done through a, a calibrator machine, which ensures that the surface is uniform and it gives uniform thickness across the length and breadth of the ply. So what it does is, if you measure a ply, any of our ply, the maximum variance that you get is 0.25 in case you get. And also when you do a lamination on our ply, because of a uniform surface without any undulation, the finishing is far more superior than the other uh, products. Uh, thank you so much, Amit ji. Uh, for, the, for the attendees, uh, may I please point out, we can take more questions. We will be requesting Mr. Pandey to be here with us during the duration of the event and join us once again at 1.30 for another short question answer session. So any more questions that you have, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat box addressing to all panelists and attendees so that we can all see it and answer your queries. Ashita, there's one question from Aditya Kumar Singh. So can you just take Yes, it? we have just handled that. We have taken that. Thank okay. you, Rohit. Yeah. So uh, may I now, so thank you, Mr. Pandey. Thank you we so will much. We're now uh, handing the floor over to the Griya Council. May I now invite architect Akashdeep, who is senior manager at the Griya Council, to take on the main event of the day, which is Griya's presentation and the awareness program. Good morning, architect Akashdeep. Hi, good morning, Arjuna. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Akash, we can hear you clear. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'll share the screens once it's visible to confirm. <coughs> Uh, full screen now. Uh, yes, uh, yes yeah. your screen is visible. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, hello everyone, and uh, as Achana said, myself Akash Deep, I work as senior program manager with Greer Council, and um, uh, thanks to IAA, we are hosting this third awareness, if I'm not wrong, and this is the first online awareness which we are doing. So, uh, we'll try to do this as attractive as possible. It's easy to have interactions when we are in face to face. These are the new normals which we are handling. So, uh, I request all participants we as interactive as possible, and uh, I'll try to do the same from my side as well. So uh, you'll have your Q&A at the end, but I'll have the Q&A throughout the two hours with me. So you have to be here with me for the, all the Q&A I'm going to have. Now, uh, in the morning, thanks uh, to uh, our panelists. Most of the advantages of GREA has already been discussed. So thanks to Rishabh and uh, Mr. Naresh. Uh, they have already shared with you guys why GREA is important, how it is linked to the Indian industry and why it is important to uh, address sustainability through GREA and the built environment. Uh, and interestingly, uh, just uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, there have been two major announcements from government of India and um, especially Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, we have participants from Jammu and Kashmir, so I'm reiterating these quotes again. Uh, in the third biennial uh, report, which uh, the government of India has submitted to UNFCCC on the COP Paris Agreement, uh, attaining the um, uh, two degree reduction in the temperature as climate change requirements. Uh, they have reiterated the importance of GREHA in the built environment and how uh, government of India is implementing GREHA in the built environment across the country to mitigate carbon reduction through built environment. And uh, this is a new report which has been launched just this week and it is available on both things. We have website, yes, but on uh, Google as well. Uh, the second major important announcement which happened this week was from the Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory. And as per the green building policy, 
Now, interestingly, they have released just this week. Uh, it has clearly mentioned that they, you have an extra incentive in Jammu and Kashmir for adopting Greha. Uh, the incentive ranges from uh, uh, about 3% to 15% extra FAR for one to five stars, all rated projects. As well as, it is an interesting one which has not been there in any other state till now. Uh, they have uh, taken off uh, the need of having a mandatory clearance if you have a GREA certification. So that's a, a new um, incentive which has been rolled out by any state or union territory till now. So now if you're taking a GREA rating, you do not require an environment clearance in Jammu and Kashmir. So that's a very uh, good uh, uh, adoption of GREA, especially Jammu and Kashmir. And interestingly, the same um, policy has been pitched to uh, Leh and Ladakh because uh, Ladakh is also in interaction with Peri and Greha Council on implementing sustainability through Greha. So just to give you two updates before we run into the presentation. And uh, uh, the presentation in general is uh, uh, about the Greha process, uh, a basic brief of why and how Greha was formed. And then we will deep dive into some... Uh, 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 yeah, this, uh, the more fast we go, probably. It's a very simple question. We all are architects, so I think so we know the answer of this, at least. Anyone in the chat uh, who wants to be, wants to say, please raise hands. Uh, so I think so. Uh, the chat is very important in this uh, presentation. I'll request everyone to use the chat function as much as possible because Rita Modi, I think so there's a raised hand. Uh, Achana, you are going to unmute, yes. Protect ourselves from the environment. Uh, yes, so to protect ourselves from the environment. Uh, very interestingly put, so what we do is basically we require buildings as well as from the climate. And to, uh, the major intent of protecting us from climate is that we provide comfort to us. These buildings or these building blocks which we make for others, for us, what? Residences, offices, commercial spaces, these are environments which we create to provide us comfort. Now, when I say comfort, it is very important. What is our comfort? How do I measure it? Is the, are there uh, many comforts which I look for? Or are there very specific comforts which a building should provide at least to make it as a building, basically? So, uh, with the modern day times, there are four basic comforts which we are looking for in the building. If your building is not providing these basic comforts, it is not worth saying that it's a building. It can be as simple as staying outside in the climate itself. So first is obviously the visual comfort, thermal comfort, visual comfort, yeah. acoustical comfort, and lastly, the modern day time issues, indoor air quality. Now we all know that obviously thermal comfort is very essential. We all have air, air conditioning. Uh, previously, we used to have, depend majorly on Passive architecture for providing comfort, but nowadays more and more active and hybrid systems are coming into place. But still, we are looking if passive is possible, and that's much more sustainable, self-reliant. Uh, visual comfort very important nowadays. If you see, and uh, I'll talk in context of uh, the NCR region. Just travel down to Gurgaon, and the whole road, uh, the whole Gurgaon in that way, huge glass box buildings which you see. 
Yes, we have used high efficient glass to make sure that the heat doesn't come in. But at the end of the day, any glass which you use, you'll have high glare. And then what you do is put on the curtains, switch on the lights. So the intent of using a window has totally disappeared. Now a window which you use in a building is basically for either visual comfort, basically the uh, daylighting integration and cross ventilation. Cross ventilation is out of the window nowadays because most of us prefer having an AC building. But the only last use of that window is daylighting. But if the window is not optimally designed, if the building is not optimally designed, basic use of window providing a proper glare-free daylight is also not there. And the building is not being designed properly. So it becomes very important the visual comfort is understood as a holistic manner rather than just uh, daylighting. Glare is very important component and I believe we have all experienced glare. Try using a mobile phone, mobile phone a smartphone, in half sunlight outside standing in the ground, you will not be able to use it. It's called glare, it's called discomfort. And if a building is still providing the same environment, there's no point of providing a building at all. So all these four basic comforts are the basic need of a building. If your building is not meeting it, it is not worth calling it a building as simple as that. Leave sustainability alone, leave uh, uh, green buildings alone. These are the basic needs of the buildings. Okay, uh, this you must have seen many other times. So uh, as we said, uh, the climate, uh, we make buildings to uh, make sure uh, we are comfortable from the climate. Can anybody guess how many climate zones are there across the world? Any number? All participants, please be open to answer. You can put in a chart, it's much more easier. Just put in a number and ask me you. How many climate zones are there across the world? We are talking about architecture as a world. Any guesses? Guys, please reply. Raising their hands. I think so. We should prefer chatting. <laughs> Raising a hand is a lengthy process, but yeah, it's fine. That's <laughs> as the participants want. Anyone? Kirti, I think so. You have a mute uh, a mute option. Are you want to, want, wanting to say something? Kirti Modi? Anyone? Any guess? How many climate zones across the world? Give me a number. 10, 20, 30. Yes, we have a number. We have a number, Akash. Yeah, we have 12 from um, <laughs> Mr. Pankaj. Uh, so, uh, anyway, any other, any, anyone wants to bid more or less with this number? Anybody wants to treat the bidding number? No? So, as per the Copenhagen report, the world has more than 31 climate zones, interestingly. And uh, we, yeah, as a subcontinent, is the only subcontinent has the who has the maximum amount of climate zones again, and that will be again an interesting number. That's the twelve number which uh, Pankaj has given. So India itself, as per the Copenhagen report, has around eleven or twelve climate zones itself. The Indian subcontinent. Uh, I heard the sound. Was it something? Fine. Yeah. So India the subcontinent has the, it's one of the biggest subcontinent to have that climate diversity in itself. So it becomes very important that architecture in itself handles this diversity in climate when we are making these buildings. So uh, India map, many other times we have seen this map. Now, if you see the location of India on the map, that's the lat long where we are, the Indian lat long. Nine, uh, below 9 degrees to 15 degrees lat long, uh, latitude, which is there basically. And if I ask you, if you can spot any of the developed country in this bat, let alone some parts of probably China or Malaysia or Dubai, but try to find out any other developed country in this bat. You have Northern America, you have Southern America, you have South Africa, you have Europe, you have England, you have Russia, can't hear anything. Uh, is it the same with everyone, uh, Ajna? Yes, the audio is slightly unclear. It's it's coming in. Stop my video because then probably it is eating the bandwidth. Uh, one second, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Spanka, I, am I? Yes, Avitesh can hear me. Uh, okay, so I'll repeat the questions. If you see the map and if you see the Indian lat long, that's the Indian location. That's the Indian lat long, Nine degree, uh, so five degrees to fifteen degrees. And now if I ask you to spot any of the developed countries in this map, it's basically hardly some parts of Dubai because of oil. Some parts of China or Malaysia, you can say some of these islands. But other than that, maybe Singapore, yes. South America. 
Yeah. So North America, South America, South Africa, England, uh, Europe, uh, Russia, Australia, even Japan, Korea. Everything is either beyond or below and above the Indian laptop. What does this tell us? It tells us that if we try to ape the modern, uh, ape, ape the so-called developed countries, we will not be able to do anything at the end of the day. Where we are, it's a specific zone on the climate of the earth. It's, it's the specific zone on earth. If we wanted to be sustainable, we were sustainable actually before we started aping the West uh, in our ancient uh, or in our um, kind of uh, uh, both architecture as well as our living uh, requirements. Uh, we were sustainable throughout the, uh, our previous ancestral lives. So we used to uh, reuse um, the materials. We used to use mud for construction. Uh, uh, Akash, uh, excuse me, Akash. Yes. Uh, I need to intervene. I think the audio is still a problem to some participants. Is they are not unable to hear. Uh, okay, one second. To some Let's of see. them, you are audible. This seems odd that some are audible and some are not. It will be a equivalent. They probably the network is an issue on the other side as well. But I'll try to change my locations. Uh, probably that will help. One second. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pankaj Jyoti, if you can just confirm whether he will be audible now. We'll uh, be making this adjustment I, for you. Yeah. Am I audible now, uh, Pankaj? Yes or no? Akash, it's much better at this moment. Okay, so I'll continue on that. Yes. Uh, if, again, there's a problem, just drop a text message or Arjuna, you can stop me. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I continue, please. Yeah, so this gives a basic idea that aping the West or uh, aping the uh, developed country is not a good answer or correct answer to our problems. And um, just to give a brief scenario why this is being discussed here. So we all know, uh, we all uh, have a, a tendency of aping the best. So best quotes are most of the quotes which we are uh, used to have now, where these have changed, comes from West culture. So uh, there's a basic, basic brief, uh, basically a comparison between India and America and it's three basic things, land, population, and the population density on which you, we build our cities, our buildings, and the requirements of the country. So that's India and that's US in terms of land. This is a pretty old, uh, not uh, that recent uh, uh, numbers, but it will give you a basic idea what we are talking about. So that's India and the land mass, and that's US in the land mass. That's India and the population, and that's US in the population. We all know this, it's good, uh, but let's see it on some specific cities. The five metropolitan cities we have, and five metropolitan cities they have. So that's uh, Indian Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta, Chica uh, Chennai, and Bangalore. And then this is your New York, LA, Chicago, Dallas, and Ellsworth. So this is approximately the same population which we have in all these cities. And that's why this comparison is being done. Now, the moment you go into the land mass available in these cities versus the population, this is what we have, and this is what they have. Uh, this is Mumbai per person. So this is the land area of Mumbai, and that's the population of Mumbai. Interestingly, New York, the land mass and the population is still equivalent. Same is with NCR, Calcutta, Chennai, Bangalore, you name the metropolitan cities we have. That's the problem which we face. We want 30 square meters per person as for the international guidelines. We don't have 30 square meter per person with us. We have uh, one of the major challenges to face as the population with, with us. So it's important that our sustainability requirements, our sustainable needs are designed and defined as for the Indian culture, as for the Indian needs, not copy pasting from any other culture. So this is what we deal when we are making our cities. This is population cities on which, uh, if anybody has a mic on, may I request, please mute it. Uh, there's some disturbance. Anyways, so this is the Mumbai density which we are dealing with. This is the Delhi density, Calcutta density, Chennai and Bangalore density. So this is what we are dealing with, per person density, per square kilometer densities. Uh, that's the land population mass index. Now, next is the climate. Let's talk about climate. So interestingly, if you see the Indian cities, we have a huge drastic difference of the climate happening. Wherever the US cities are more towards the heat requirements. So they require heat, heat to be captured within the building. And that's why the glass box. But we already have ample heat. If we start making glass box as the Western culture, 
we will require three times more air conditioning requirements than the Western needs because they require heat. We do not require heat. We do require in most of the parts of the country, uh, actually, uh, we do not require heat in the buildings. So that's the climate difference. But sadly, say, can anybody guess where these buildings are from? India, US, city in India. Any guesses? I hope I'm audible. Nobody is answering. So I hope I'm audible at least. But uh, a reply would be very helpful. Can anybody guess the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right? Where are these buildings from? Dubai. OK. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> you know, uh, just for helping you out, it has a recognizable logo, DLF logo, <laughs> on the top right. So this is your NCR. But, uh, so interestingly, these four images show that these two buildings are from US, uh, from India, and these two buildings are from US. All these differences which we have discussed, but still the buildings look same. So something wrong which we are doing as an architect. There's something wrong which we are actually trying to copy from uh, West. And that is not the solution. That is not the answers which we should look for. So top two buildings are basically NCR region and bottom two are from US, basically. Uh, based on the range of answers you got, you know, Delhi, NCR, Gurgaon, yes. Bangalore, right? and Dubai, Dubai, right? And Dubai. So, yes. <laughs> so uh, interestingly, when you open a, uh, inch, uh, our uh, previous uh, architecture, our uh, ancient architecture buildings, anybody can spot on which climate which city and which location it, that building is, that building belongs to. But that is the irony of the modern architecture which we follow. You can just pick that building up and place across the world and it is still the same, basically. And that's what we are looking in sustainability that this should not happen. Each climate zone, each city, each, each location has its own requirements. Just copy pasting a building is not a solution. Copy pasting is not a solution to anything, let alone the building requirements. And that's what we need to change. So what we are asking you to do is basically, this should not happen. These are the current buildings. And these are, this is the famous, uh, the Gurgaon entry corridor which we have. Now, as, we, as I was discussing, why do we make buildings that we know to comfort? Now, when we say in a building, we have a window. Why do we require a window? And interestingly, in this building, if you see all the glazings which was given, we have a misconcept that the more glazing I give, the more daylight is there. Actually, that is not the case. It's, So what happens is basically uh, the more windows you have, it yes, might increase the lux levels. So intensity might increase, which might increase the glare component within your building. At the end of the day, you will put down the curtains and that what happens across Gurgaon, upon most of the modern buildings. You can see that the curtains are down and at the end I turn on my, this is what we call as glare. Okay, I have provided a small window. My daylighting will be very good. But this is what happens. If there's a direct sunlight coming on any of the windows which you're designing during the day, you'll have glare within your building. It will not be visually comfortable unless you have proper shading of your glass, unless you have proper shading of your window. Then you can use any type of glass. Who's asking you to install a, a double uh, glazing with high performance? It is not required. You're doing that because you're going for a curtain glass. You are requiring to in, uh, reduce the heat within the building, but you'll not be able to control the glare. Glare can only be controlled if the direct sunlight is not happening on glass. And uh, today, that's what we'll be discussing in various examples, no thermal comforts. Uh, it's a very basics uh, which we are taught in architecture and that's what the basic sustainability in design says. Okay, if I know if I enter a room, um, uh, for example, we all must have done this exercise probably. Uh, I can, uh, if I go into a room and at sp any specific point of time during the day, I can tell what orientation it is with regards to whenever I enter a room, how thermally comfortable I am. For example, in Indian context, if you are in most of the cities, if you are uh, having a bedroom which is oriented towards north, it is in generally thermally comfortable during the summer. Yes, but winters, it require a heating arrangements at its uh, very much required. Then if it's, for example, in the southern facade and you have a proper balcony and proper chacha is there, automatically during the winters, during the summers, it's one of the most comfortable rooms which you have. Because in summers, the sun is cut through the chajas balconies, and um, in winters, the sun comes down inside the room because of the lower sun uh, angle. 
But uh, if you're having an east facing window in your bedroom, I guarantee if you do not have alarm clock, you will not require it in summers because the glare component in the morning sun is so huge that you automatically wake up because of the glare. If you are not putting a curtain and sleeping in the night, the sun will automatically wake you up. You'll have that glare coming on your eyes on your east facing window. And uh, west is one of the worst areas to be in India. So west you have high glare, high heat, everything is high. And if you have a bedroom which is facing west, and interestingly, even if you give a 10 meter long balcony or a chajja, it will not save you from thermal heat. You will have lots of heat coming in because the west sun is in front of you. Even if I provide a chajja, it will not cut the sun. And uh, the moment I go inside a west facing uh, window room, I will require an AC put on 16 degrees, 18 degrees. I need to be comfortable. That's what the building I've brought it for. So the designing becomes very important. And these are the basics of architecture. That's the basic of Vastu also, if you uh, very well say it. That was original Vastu, which was to place your designing parameters as, as per the requirements, as per the requirements of the building. So what needs to change? So this is the current scenario. What you see is design cost is design cost and time is just this much of the project. Marketing is this much. Construction is still this much. Operation is again 60 years and maintenance is again 70, 60 to 80 years. So what is wrong in this? The, the, the most important thing which is wrong is this component of time and cost invested in design is the least. However, this is what the sustainability requirement is. If the design cost and time is increased, automatically the rest will be less. Whether it's the marketing time and cost, whether it's the construction time and cost, whether it's operation time and cost, whether it's maintenance time and cost. However, the current times which we focus is basically on this cost. And we all, as an architect, I think so agree. If you are having a government or a private client, every client asks you to submit a design day before yesterday. Already, if you are giving that design today. So we are not having ample, we are not given the time for designing. Just copy paste from something and give us. That's not sustainable. That's not the uh, that's not the requirement of the times, basically. So what do we need to change? We need to change the current work process. And that is the two favorite keys on your keyboards have to be deleted. Select and delete. So this is generally what happens, not just in the architecture, across all uh, working spheres. Any problem which we face, the Google Baba is the best option. Go to Google, type in the question, find the answer, control C, control V, and the work is done. Sorry to say, this is neither cool nor sustainable. This is the worst thing which could have happened in the modern times, basically. So we need to remove the control C, control V keywords from our uh, laptops if we want to be sustainable, actually. So now, Coming back to the topic, that was the basic philosophy on Griha <laughs> and why sustainability is important in the current times. Uh, I, I am hopeful that we all are aware of this building. This is one of the first rated buildings in our country. I'll say first rated because green buildings we used to make, but this is officially the first rated buildings in our country. Why I'm saying this, this is the CIA headquarters in Hyderabad. Now, uh, uh, what people do not know is this building, uh, like any other buildings, you have consultants on board. So this building, Terry, uh, the, our parent body, Griha's parent body, that's the Energy and Resource Institute, was the green building consultant for this building. And they helped this building to achieve the LEED Platinum rating in 2001. Now, during this process, Terry, as a body, realized that uh, Indian climatology, Indian building environment, you cannot copy-paste the rating system as it is to this, uh, this subcontinent, which has different issues, which has different climatology requirements, which has all different needs at each individual uh, state. So uh, in 2005, actually Terry came up with Terry Gray as a rating system. Now down the line, what happened is in 2007, our ministry, that's Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, uh, adopted Griha as the national green building rating for our country. And we got multiple other recognitions through the international and national recognition. Uh, uh, recognitions both internationally and nationally. Uh, please be, feel free to uh, type in your any query if you have, um, so that I'm aware that you are listening and I'm not audible, at, I'm audible at least. However, the most recent ones which we have uh, is in the UNFCCC, if you are aware of the Paris Agreement. 
the famous Paris Agreement from which US during the times of the previous pres president pulled out of the Paris Agreement that we'll not be funding it. And uh, now the new president has then came back into the uh, Paris Agreement that yes, we'll fund the climate change uh, uh, mitigation are all these things, right? So in that, government of India has recognized Korea as the uh, Indianized rating system, our own rating system, which we have built to mitigate carbon reduction in the built environment. And that was the third biennial, biennial report, which I was discussing in the first, before in uh, starting the presentation, that has again uh, emphasized on how Korea has helped mitigate carbon reduction in the built environment. Now, uh, as we, as uh, Rishabh also has mentioned in, in the initial discussion, you have heard there are many incentives which has been given by various states, uh, especially the FAR incentive is one of the most uh, actually accepted the widespread uh, incentive across various states, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Haryana, Rajasthan, and now Jammu and Kashmir as well. Uh, uh, you can find the detailed listing of these incentives on the GRIA website. There's a specific page on incentives, so any new incentives which is rolled out by either government or, uh, sorry, either state or uh, central body, it is there available on the GRIA website also for your reference. The oldest of them all and the most in, uh, innovative of them all was this at the Maharashtra region, at the two small municipalities or the ULBs, that's Pimpi Chinchwad Municipal Corporation and the Pune Municipal Corporation. What they have given is basically they have given the two side approach to the incentive. If you are a developer, you'll get a premium rebate if you are making a one star to five star rated building. However, if you are a property owner, you'll get a property tax rebate as well from one star to a five star rated building. So this was only there in Maharashtra and still there only there in Maharashtra. The rest of our states have started adopting the FAR incentives. Uh, you have a specific uh, pass track in Mount Florence uh, in most of the states where you take a GRIA pre certification. A GRIA pre certification is a design stage uh, evaluation of any of the projects. And on that basis, if you attain a one star pre certified, three star pre certified, five star pre certified, you can claim the incentives and you can also get a fast track clearance for uh, state uh, environmental clearance bodies. And this has been actually opted out from Jammu and Kashmir, as I told initially also. Now, as for the uh, new green building policy of Jammu and Kashmir, if you are making a Griha compliant building, you do not, you are not required to take an EC clearance from for any of the buildings from the state bodies. So these are the incentives which are there. And uh, in general, uh, there are multiple collaborations and the government mandates which are there for Griha adoptions. Uh, since 2009, in 2009, that was the first mandate which was launched by the government of India, all the secretaries that all central government buildings are required to have a minimum three star rating. That's mandatory. But we all know that uh, in India, mandatory is still a word, uh, maximum times. So this mandate is still being implemented in many of the states and uh, ministry, uh, central ministries. So for that, what has happened is that, for example, uh, Ministry of Defense had to send a separate memorandum that all MES built buildings, all the defense buildings had to take Gria 3 star. Then same way as Petroleum Ministry, the Aviation Ministry, the HRD Ministries have given their own directive separately also to make sure that this mandate is taken further. So how this has been taken further, all airports are uh, mandatorily GRIA 3 star or now they are aiming 4 star as well. All the IAMs, IITs, AIMS uh, have a mandate to take a GRIA 3 star minimum. All the, <coughs> sorry, all the hospitals which are being built under the Pravahan Mantri uh, Jeevan uh, Yojana, uh, they have a mandate to get, take GRIA 3 stars. With the government side, there's always a, also a private uh, uh, adoption which is happening. So many of the developers, both in uh, southern, uh, northern, and the western regions, have started adopted GRIA as their own requirements. So uh, best take IRIO in the northern regions. You have uh, uh, Satwa developers. You have the Parani developers in the Maharashtra region. Satwa in the Bangalore and Karnataka region. Various developers has opted for GRIA. Even there are very less incentives in some states. So it is more of a self. Uh, uh, motivation of adopting of GRIA in for some developers now, but uh, because they understand the need that without this, it is not possible to achieve true sustainability in the built environment. Uh, we all make multiple types of buildings. So we make a residence, we make a commercial space, we make an office space, we make havas, we make museums. So what GRIA says is sustainability is not majorly linked with typology, actually speaking. It's your strategy as an architect 
actually evolves with regards to the size of the building. So yes, there is obviously a requirement of water requirement of energy is with regards to the technology which you are making. But the sustainability design involvements is majorly with regards to the scale. Uh, when I am doing site planning, uh, so Aditya has a question: Which government ministry or military body in India regulates green or grand incentives? So generally in India, uh, Aditya, uh, uh, <coughs> building is a state subject most of the times. So uh, state are the major authorities which can release these incentives. Uh, there are, as I mentioned, there are some incentives on the country level as well. Uh, but in general, the country, uh, government of India can only release a directive to various ministries and states to be as green as possible. But uh, they have done their, their own part in 2009 saying that all central government buildings have to be green, have three star. But uh, major buildings which you are making are under the state uh, jurisdiction in each of the states, state and union territories. So the incentives is generally, uh, generally rolled out by ULBs uh, in most of the states. And uh, depending on how proactive and how um, uh, adoptive the ULBs are, these incentives are given. And one of the major challenges which we have seen in the incentives is also lack of the ULB's knowledge on how these sustainable ratings work. Because many of the times it has been seen, even the incentives have been rolled out. But if there is no set process in place how to roll out these incentives, for implementation, there's always a challenge in the built environment. And one of the best case was uh, to, this example was the NOIDA, basically authority. In, uh, initially, the incentive of FAR was launched by NOIDA authority, but the process was not there. How this incentive will be given to the developers. And most recently, they have added this whole process into the bylaws itself. But till uh, last three, four years back, this whole process was not there. So even the developers or the rating bodies were not aware of how these ULBs will get these incentives. So now the pre-certification, the design stage evaluation gives them a, a basic uh, guidelines on they are meeting a three-star, four-star, five-star at the design stage, through which they go to the authority to get an approval on their design, and they get an extra FAR. They do the construction as per the green building uh, process. And then once the building is complete, they submit the rating certificate to claim what they have submitted as a bank guarantee for the extra FAR, uh, the green extra FAR, which they have taken from the authority in the design stage. Now, if your rating at the last, when the building is complete, is not meeting the uh, initial uh, set standard on which you have taken the incentive, your bank guarantee is withdrawn. And you're not, uh, as a builder, you do not get your money back as simple as that. So this is only the uh, process which is now followed across all states. Uh, hope Aditya have given your answer. If you have any other queries, please put uh, in the chat. Uh, Akash, I have a question at this stage. Now, yes. uh, if an incentive is given and the FAR goes up, right? Yes. So does Griha recalculate since the values of the basic, you know, uh, the, the FAR goes up, right? So your values as far as all the calculations for various criteria will also modify. Yes. So what happens is uh, the builder has to just decide what uh, during pre-certification what star rating I am aiming for. So for example, uh, I am aiming a three star with a 10% extra FAR or a 9% extra FAR. The project which you submit for evaluation to GRI is with the extra FAR. And that pre-certification is submitted to the uh, ULB with the extra FAR evaluated by GRIA. Okay, I'm uh, aiming a four star, so I'm aiming a 12% extra FAR. According to the 12% extra FR, this is my design which has to be evaluated by GRIA. That is what you submit, not with the original FR and then you claim for extra FR. That is not the design submission which we are expecting. And that is what the evaluation which ULB is ex expecting from us. So you need to incorporate the extra FR in your evaluation which you are submitted to GRIA. We will evaluate the whole process. Accordingly, we will give you a three star or four star. If you are not achieving four star, probably you can uh, update your design during the pre certification and claim and um, get a four star pre certification as per the 12% extra FR which you are That whole set of documents goes to the ULB for approval as per the construction requirements of 12% extra FR. Then, is it clear, Achana? Achana, is it clear? Carry on, Agash. Yes, yeah. absolutely, I'm clear. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what I was referring was what Gria has done is we have not given you a separate rating system for all of the different uh, buildings. To simplify the process for anybody to understand, we have given you two types of. Uh, so, we generally have two types of buildings in our built environment. Either it can be a new building or it can be an existing building. That's the only case. 
Now, if you are having a new building, you have four variants to choose from as per the size. So three are as per the size. The fourth one came later on as per the government of India's requirement. The first one is the Swagriha rating system. That's simple, versatile, affordable Griha. It's a simplified version. It just has 14 criteria. It's a less cost rating system. It ranges from 30,000 to 1 lakh maximum, uh, the rating fees. And uh, uh, architect and the client can sit together and do this rating by themselves. So you know, do not require a third party consultant for this rating system. Uh, another thing important about this rating system is that it's a self-evaluation tool. It's not just a rating tool, it's also a design tool. So what you do is once you register for Sogria, you get, get an access to an online tool. You put in your city in which you are making your building and as for your city and as for your typology which you have chosen for your building, it will suggest you what you can do to make it better. So that's why when I say it, it's a design come rating tool. And the, the more you keep on integrating its suggestions, it will make sure that you have a better rating at the end of the day. So it's basically a very well equipped design come rating tool for an architect. You do not require a consultant and uh, you can actually sit with your client, punch in numbers, evaluate yourself, then re-punch in numbers and get a better rating for yourself, basically. Uh, the next is the Greha variant, which is majorly applicant, app applicable to most of the built environment. So anything which is above 2,500 square meters of built area goes under Greha. And uh, this we'll talk in the more details in today's presentation in general. So I'll not in detail in this link to design come rating tool. Uh, Adit, uh, it's a Swagriha. So everything is there on the website of Griha. I'll show the link of the website at the end, but it's Griha India. If you search on Google, you'll find it. Uh, all the rating details, all the manuals, all the checklists are available on the Griha website. So you just have to, I think, so make a bit effort on going on the website. Also, all the registered project listing is available on the GRIA website. So if anybody wants to ask, uh, and in the UNF C document, it is mentioned that by 2020, uh, we had around 1,800 projects across India. So all these now, uh, that number is around, uh, I think, so 2,100. But again, all these 2,100 projects, the name of the project, the city, the type of rating is they are claiming, and the client, all this there is there on the GRIA website. So GRIA website has much information which you could see from sustainable environment. Just you have to go and effort to go there and browse through. Also, the projects which are rated by Drea, there's a, something called case study in the, uh, 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 the case study under the library section under Drea. So every building which is rated, uh, there's a case study card prepared for the users and this is put online on the website. And what are the basic things which they have done? All the energy numbers, water numbers, all the sustainable uh, parameters which they have adopted. There's a small kind of a summary which is created with the project team as well and put there on the website for people, other people to learn from it, other people to at least uh, go through it so that you can, uh, you can implement these in your projects as much as possible. <coughs> okay, the third rating which is there as per scale is the GRIA for large development. This is GRIA LD rating systems. But these are for large sites which are more than 50 hectares tight area. But these sites are uh, uh, actually are developed with 15 to 20 years of deadline. So interesting thing about this rating system is that it evaluates your sustainable development down the line to future of 20 years or 30 years. Would you be sustainable when your building construction is complete in this site? What will be your impact once your whole site is completed? Would you be self-reliant or will you be reliant on the surroundings on uh, destroying the environment around you. So this is an impact assessment rating on a large scale. So all the ITs, all the IMs, all the AIMs, all the, um, uh, say, SEJs, uh, they prefer doing this uh, LD rating system because these are large sites which are evaluating. Now what happens is if you are taking an LD rating system, still you will go for individual rating for your GRIA or so GRIA because the LD rating system evaluates your site ass assessments. It does not go into the details of your individual building ECBC compliance or how building how your how well your building shading is designed, what is your glass. So for that, you still go for Greha and Sogra individually. But LD is a large scale, uh, a city scale or neighborhood scale uh, evaluation tool, basically. Uh, so this these three ratings evaluate anything which you build at the end of the day. It can be a small scale building, it can be a medium scale building, it can be a large scale campus. However, most recently, you all know, under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, there was a special request by the uh, government of India to make an evaluation tool for sustainable, uh, affordable housing, because true sustainability is basically if it is affordable. Uh, logically speaking, uh, there's a misconception in our country that sustainability is not affordable. However, I say if it is not 
affordable, it cannot be sustainable, as simple as that. Because that is the core belief of sustainability is be self-reliant. And that self-reliance is also in terms of money. You don't have to invest more. You don't have to invest on uh, too much on anything. You have to optimize on anything. And that's what sustainability is. So if you are actually, what we say is, if you're investing more to make a green building, you're not doing a green building at the end of the day again. You're doing something wrong. And uh, to make a sustainable building affordable or affordability, uh, to make affordable building sustainable, it is important that correct measures are implemented at correct time. Time is of the essence. For example, if I make everything as a design stage, I get it approved and then I say, Once your design is freeze, you can't do anything as green in it. Basically, it's almost everything, every possibility I've blocked for yourself. So it is basically, the, it's from the start to the end. Sustainability is a life cycle uh, commitment. Uh, you cannot say that, okay, I want to be sustainable today. Kal se mera mood nahi sustainable hone ka. That's not sustainability. Once you have committed yourself, either you are sustainable or you are not sustainable. That's simple as that. It's very plain old, very basic concept. Uh, so that is new building in all uh, parameters. And you'll be amazed to know, uh, we had the first dhaba. Uh, a roadside DAPA to get a so uh, evaluation done. And that's uh, if you are traveling to the from Delhi towards Muradabad, it's on Muradabad Highway. There's a video, I think so. My one of them, my colleagues will share you the link of that video as well. It's the first DAPA to go for a sustainable rating. So, anything as, as I said, whatever you are building can be sustainable. The intent has to be there. And uh, as an architect, we should be open for implementing sustainability, right? So uh, that's called Tarka Dhaba, by the way. Uh, now, when we go into the existing building, you have two rating system. One is the gray hour. <coughs> Sorry. Existing building. And uh, this is very straightforward. And uh, uh, this one of the states which have adopted gray existing building uh, on priority was the Maharashtra states. We have done um, a very fast track project for them in which in uh, six months, we have evaluated around 320 Government of Maharashtra PWD buildings under the EB rating. They have implemented lots of things in this six months. Actually, most of the buildings are three star or four star rated buildings. These 300 projects under Maharashtra uh, PWD. And the most last in the existing building and the most interesting ones uh, of uh, the ratings which we have is the Greya for day schools, existing day schools. Now, this rating is kind of very interesting. Why I say very interesting? Because we do not, we do not require uh okay then zada padhe log for this basically uh, architect and engineer or a uh, uh, well renowned uh, civil architect civil engineer or electrical engineer this rating is for students for schools uh, existing day schools this rating is taken by the students for their school and for themselves basically so uh, there's no involvement of architect there's no involvement of engineers this is done by the students and teachers for their schools why this has rating and this year this rating will not find it across any other parts of the cult, uh, world itself this is only there in india because as we said we are different so we require something for dif uh, are different as for our culture uh, what we see uh, what we do what we seek to do with this rating is that uh, sustainability if uh, we are adamant and learning new things, but we are still open, yes. But uh, it's easier to make school students or uh, youngsters to learn new things. And people who have children at their home, they know that. If a teacher has told you something, then you will be okay. They do not listen to us, uh, to parents, as simple as that. Teacher is Bhagwan, abhi bhi, <laughs> in that way. So uh, it's uh, easier for us if we want to implement sustainability for, for our future environment. We have to make them understand what true sustainability is. So this rating is very interesting. So students are given an exercise. They go in each of their uh, classes. Uh, they count how many lights they have, how many fans they have, how many students are using that room. Uh, is uh, the daylight uh, coming example? So there are small calculators built in for them to evaluate the, their own building, how sustainable it is. Now the intent is also is that once they grow up, they not uh, they might not all become architects. They might become a law uh, a person. They might be politicians. They might be anybody uh, in any different streams. They have the sustainability in, embedded in their core beliefs through students, through schools. So this is an interesting rating. I think so. If you are working with schools, you should go and look for this rating and try it at, at least one school if you are working with them.
and an overarchingly you have a gaya for cities rating this is basically for cities and this was initially developed for uh, the amravati city capital which was being developed in the south but irony of our country is that a government changes and the products are <laughs> uh, the projects are uh, off the radar and there was a huge loss in the amravati city because the government changed and it was stuck but initially uh, this rating was uh, being uh, was being rolled out for amravati as a city uh, the whole city was under the griha jurisdiction of getting a rating rating under cities and different passes were under the griha ld griha and so griha passes so what griha generally is griha is basically a rating tool it measures it's an evaluation tool of your sustainability through the built environment now uh, the basic policy or basic concept behind griha is what gets measured gets managed and that's not griha it's basic management funda so if you want to manage anything it's a even if it's a human resource it's time it's uh, energy it's water it's material you have to measure it and that's what you see in various criteria under griha that there's a set benchmark of measuring it you have to show that you are better in saving it once you measure it uh generally in a project you have four stages design or construction operation and maintenance griha evaluates throughout the life cycle as we said so sustainability is a life cycle commitment so what you say is why this is important uh, okay if i made a building as an architect which is very good uh, passive design building it's a well sufficient building self sufficient building but during construction there are lots of losses there are lots of material loss there are lots of air pollution there are lots of uh, imported materials which are using in construction so that building is not sustainable at the end of the day now in the design is very good construction i have done lots of effort and make sure that i am sustainable but during operation and maintenance the operation maintenance team didn't know how the building to operate so at the end of the day my energy bills will be high my water bills will be high uh, the, the whole intent of making a building sustainable is lost now if you see the role of architect if during architecture in the design itself the sustainability is missing we have a glass box which we have made and given to the client whatever the construction team whatever the operation team or might try to do they cannot make that building sustainable it's as simple as that so it becomes very important sustainability is a process uh, it's not the end result if your process is sustainable automatically the end result will be sustainable however the same cannot be said on the uh, vice versa कि अगर आपका एंड रिजल्ट सस्टेनेबल है तो हो सकता है प्रोसेस भी सस्टेनेबल ऐसा नहीं होगा बट अगर प्रोसेस सस्टेनेबल है तो इतना पक्का गारंटी है योर एंड रिजल्ट विल बी सस्टेनेबल एंड दैट व्हाट्स दैट व्हाट मेक्स क्रिया डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर रेटिंग सिस्टम वी आर देयर विद यू थ्रू द होल प्रोसेस सो वी मेक योर प्रोसेस सस्टेनेबल ऑटोमेटिकली व्हेन यू आर इनटू अ प्रोसेस एवरीथिंग बिकम्स सस्टेनेबल हाउ दिस हेल्प्स यू सो दिस इज द रेटिंग प्रोसेस uh uh for making taking a rating you register everything is online there's a griha rating uh, registration tool you go online and the process starts uh any project when it gets registered uh when it pays the fees there's an orientation workshop now this orientation workshop is basically uh we come to your site we used to come to your site uh, we during uh, pandemic times it's everything is online anyways again but what happens was this was an interaction interacting platform where all the client all the project team comes together and decide what is my target for rating and what each building in, uh, what each team has to do to achieve that rating so agar uh, and this has been seen many other times a client ne bola architect aapki zimmedari hai aap mere ko 4 star 4 star rating la ke do i hope english is fine with with everyone i am switching it to hindi and english in uh, metal to make it much more uh, um, discussing appealing but if anybody has any apprehensions on english or hindi just be uh, uh, put it on the text so what happens is uh, in generally it, it it's it has seen how ek dusre ki responsibilities dene mein believe karte hain to architect ne kya kiya in your tender as an architect uh, client ne kya kiya in your tender as an architect has given aapko mujhe five star la ke dena ab aap jana aap kaisa laoge Uh, not possible sorry literally not possible sustainability or green building or especially griha is only possible as a team effort each team has its role to play designer has its own role contractor has its own role client has its own role operation maintenance team has its own role agar ek ne bhi apna role play nahi kiya to rating kam to kam hogi na guarantee hai so this orientation works uh, workshop uh, gives uh, provides as a platform for everybody to sit together and decide what they want to achieve 
that's making your own targets after that it is our uh, uh, hand holding to make sure that jo aapne commitment ki wo aapni suno aur aapko rating ke end tak leke jaye for that what we do is it has the only rating system across the world which has during construction mandatory side visits the two side visits during construction are mandatory now this there are two reasons for doing this one we all know indian construction industry is a uh, informal industry so there are lot, lots of Uh, not i'll not say ill practices but malfunctionings happen during the whole process so the first site visit is planned when your building is coming out coming out of the plinth and you are actually implementing your construction management practices on site so that you make sure that you are sustainable during construction process the second site visit happens when your building structure is almost complete and this is one of the most important site visits why because uh, uh, as uh, you all might have faced it uh, as an architect when i am trying to make my building sustainable through materials sustainable use of materials in current industry everything is sustainable aap market mein jao har cheez sustainable hai ek sawal bas usse puch lo sorry yes ashna you were saying something yeah yes hello sir i think there is no yeah आपका भी वॉइस क्लियर नहीं आ रहा अभी आई एम नॉट सॉरी आई कांट इट वाज वाज क्लियर योर वॉइस वॉइस ब्रेकिंग सर आकाश यू कैन कंटिन्यू वील वील जस्ट कैच अप विथ यू okay sure 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 no problem okay so yeah, yeah uh, so uh, after the second site the second site visit why it is important because uh, uh, during the final phases of construction you are ordering all your high end equipments uh, costly finishes now when we go into the market everything is green now if you are going to ask what is green at neither as a wire i am i am aware what to look as a green building uh, nor as a seller the manufacturer knows what is green in it so it becomes very important that we make sure that uh, during the second site visit anything which you are buying you have to bear you have to be aware what documentation you have to ask from the manufacturer to know that your products are green and to help you out there is something called product catalog my colleague will be briefing you on that as well later on so this site visit becomes very important to make sure that whatever i am buying and when we are coming on site we go and evaluate this with you guys uh, what are documents which you have got from the manufacturer is it sufficient what more you need to ask so this becomes very important after that again um, it's a kind of a evaluation so there's a written examination uh, sorry so the written examination means you have to submit the documentation to us so whatever you are claiming has to be submitted to gria for evaluation and after the first evaluation the gria teams can does the final visit after the building is complete now this evaluation there is two reasoning for this one is whatever you are claiming in your documentation is actually implemented on your site that becomes very important and secondly uh, whatever better can happen whatever you have done and if something better can happen the team will give you those suggestions as well to implement it on your site now after doing all this you have still not received a rating why this evaluation after this is done by a third party evaluator so you all can become a third party evaluator uh, obviously not for your own project but for other projects there's a training which is there and after that uh, you can give an exam uh, now in the new times again this will be by uh, greha colleague apikshal in the later presentation how you can become a personal evaluator for greha uh, once this evaluation hap uh, happens then you receive a provisional rating now itna sa mehnat karne ke baad abhi bhi aap provisional pe atke the ye purana thoda process hai and the pre previous version uh, you get a rating uh, and this why it was called provisionally initially because abhi tak aapne kuch kiya nahi hai aapne claim kiya hai ki meri building energy bachayegi my building will save water my building will save energy you have not saved anything right now it all depends on your operation maintenance team at the end of the day so you get a rating provisional uh, during the previous rating version after that you do an audit you collect data how well you are using your energy how well you are saving your water aapke bills batayenge sara sari kahani so on those uh, bills you get a you used to get a final rating basically and then you said after every 5 years you make me need to check your performance of building that's the life cycle commitment for being sustainable 
So this is your design stage, this is your operations construction stage, this is your operation, this is your material stage. Uh, any doubts till now on the process? Q&A, chat, anyone? Yes or no, anyone? Please do a yes or no, at least, so that I'm aware you guys are there. <laughs> Uh, anyone from the participants, any queries? I know would do in the process at least. Breakfast, can you chalega sab? No okay. queries, you may continue. <laughs> yes, thanks, Rita. Let the participants say. Okay, Rita, thank you. Thanks for one message, Rita. All clear. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, I think Akash, you're explaining so well. Nobody needs to ask. <laughs> no, thanks, Ashana. But I need to make sure that they are there. And I can't book any better. Some people book a better one. Some people can't even. Absolutely. So these are some uh, uh, plus points around Reha. Why? What are? What is different in Reha? So it's a percentile based rating system. Uh, uh, so maximum points which you can achieve is actually out of hundred. But what you can achieve is uh, this a query from Manish which says is gem certification from such gem equivalent to Reha rating. I am not sure you can compare any rating system. It has its own plus and minus. It has just recently been launched. So we need to see how well it is tested with times. Uh, GRIA is a separate identity. GRIA is a separate rating system. It's a nationally accredited and internationally accredited rating system of India. So I think so. You should ask the question with Jen how they are. Uh, GRIA has no affiliation to Jen as such. Okay, Manish. <laughs> okay. So, uh, percentile based rating system, uh, what we say is basically uh, the maximum points which you can achieve is from 100. But why percentile? The answer is in the next line that is, it's a common sense based rating system. And by common sense, it has non applicability clauses. Now, in GRIA, you have three kinds of uh, uh, clauses or appraisals or criteria. So one is mandatory, rating as simple as that. The second is an optional clauses. The more and better you perform in the optional clauses, the better points you get and the better rating you get. There's a third one which you will not find in most of the rating system. It's called the non-applicability clause. Now, when we say sustainability, now sustainability mein kya hota hai? each element cannot be, as I said, cannot be copy-pasted across various typology, across various climatology. Yeah, there's a specific query. Everyone has been given the permission to speak. Just unmute yourself. Okay. That's from I okay. So uh, when I say non-applicability, what it says is, for example, if I take, uh, there's a clause in Reha which says, <coughs> you should preserve your existing mature trees on site. Uh, we'll discuss why it is important to preserve existing mature trees, but there's a clause. Now, uh, what Reha says is, if you are preserving it, that's the first intent. But uh, if you are cutting it, then you have to plant minimum one is to three. The second option is you transplant it within your own site. That's the second option. And third is when you're cutting it, you put minimum minus to three of the plant ratio on your side of the same species or of the native species. But, and it has around two points for this clause. Now, if in my uh, site, I do not have a mature tree on my side, what do I do? So what it does it, instead of taking your rating evaluation out of 100, it will evaluate you out of 98 points. So your rating does not get affected if something is not possible on your site to achieve to show sustainability. So if I do not have a maturity, what do I preserve? I can't do any plantation on that. I don't have trees. So those two points are deducted from your denominator and your rating is a percentile based rating system. So your rating doesn't get affected. So as I said, sustainability in Greha is common sense. If you are using your common sense, you will automatically be sustainable and you are automatically be Greha three star. That should not be any problem. Jaha common sense hata, vaha durgatna gati, as simple as that. Now, Greha uh, evaluates all your types of buildings, so AC, non AC, and hybrid building. And it's easier to evaluate an AC building for comfort, but Greha has given you parameters to evaluate comfort under the non AC spaces as well. So, NBC, NBC has these requirements. Uh, Ishtay, uh, or, uh, you have the Indian adopted comfort thermal requirements. All these are indicated within the building evaluation tool itself. It's a performance based rating system. As I said, each category has a performance limit. You have to perform better than that to get a points in that uh, rating. Also, as I said, once your building is complete, you have to perform, you have to save energy, you have to save water, and then take credit of the guess that I'm of three star, four star, five star rated bed. Greha always emphasizes on cost effective strategies. The first, easiest, and the low cost method is the best preferred method. 
इन ग्रेहा द पैसे आर्किटेक्चर आप लोग का और हम लोग का रोल इज द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट रोल हम अगर हमने ढंग से शेडिंग लगाई है तो किसी को हाई एंड ग्लास लगाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी तो कॉस्ट विल रिड्यूस ऑटोमेटिकली एच वी सी साइज विल रिड्यूस लाइटिंग रिक्वायरमेंट विल रिड्यूस अगर सब कुछ रिड्यूस होगा तो कॉस्ट क्यों बढ़ेगी सो दैट इज द मिसकनसेप्ट बिच बिहार इन कंट्री पहले हम गलत डिसीजन लेते हैं और उसके बाद से बोलते हैं सस्टेनेबिलिटी कॉस्टली है दैट इज नॉट द चैलेंज द चैलेंजेस आर the uninformed decisions which we take for making our building sustainable that is making the building costly not sustainability and lastly it's a team approach you me uh, greha team architects team consultants uh, client and uh, contractor we all are part of one team together only that building can be best or sustainable agar sab independently kaam karenge to kuch possible nahi hai at the end of the so the, uh, what greha is इंटरेस्टिंग ग्रिया का कोई सेल्फ हम लोग ने देर इज नो स्पेसिफिक रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ ग्रिया वॉट यू डन एज एज रिशा जी वॉज ऑल्सो डिस्कसिंग इन द मॉर्निंग वॉट वी डेट वॉज एवरी थिंग ऑल बेंच मार्क्स ऑल बाय लॉज आर देयर इन आर कंट्री वॉट वी लैक इज द विल टू फॉलो इट सो हमने ग्रिया किया सारे बाय लॉज सारे प्लानिंग लॉज या वाटर लॉज या सोशल लॉज या पोल्यूशन लॉज एनर्जी लॉज एनर्ज सबको एक साथ मिला के आपको एक प्लाटर में लाके दिया एज ग्रिया यू फॉलो ग्रिया यू आर कम्प्लाइन टू एवरी थिंग नाउ यू परफॉर्म बेटर टू टेक अ बेटर रेटिंग बट इफ यू डू ऑल मैनेटरी स्टफ यू आर एक्चुअली कम्प्लाइन टू ऑल गवर्नमेंट नॉर्म्स दैट इज वॉट ग्रिया इज द परसेंटाइल बेस्ट सो दिस इज बेसिकली दर्सेंटाइल अचीव सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन एवरी फिफ्टीन परसेंट यू अचीव यू गेट वन टू फाइव स्टार रेटिंग uh this is a new version which has been launched most recently of the greha so we'll go into the aspects of greha now uh no greha in this version has around 10 uh, sections one and plus one as an innovation section uh, the new things which have been ad added as archana was also mentioning in the initial presentation that greha keeps on evolving to the global requirements so the new things this is the first in of its kinds rating system to have lcc that is the life cycle costing under the evaluation itself the life cycle costing life cycle analysis has been added in the greha compliances uh, the water performance index the first uh, from in the world has been introduced uh, so you have energy performance index for energy in ecbc but water you do not have any parameters to measure the performance of the project right now across the country across the world so greha has introduced something called water performance index for projects to show their self sufficiency in, in the water side uh there are many other uh, integration in the new version and uh, new version uh, ratings uh, training has been launched online also so apeksha will be briefing you on that also there's a question uh, under the epc project mode what could be the challenge to achieve we are rating now epc is basically segregating of each process when you say uh, so one of the challenge which we have previously also faced is uh, during the epc mode uh, uh, there are some components which have been left out Uh, as for the needs of the clients in the epc mode and where there is generally a challenge in the greha process because greha evaluates your whole project throughout the life cycle now if any of the components is missing it is hard to do this evaluation but still there are ways of evaluating it and that's what there are many projects under the epc mode which are being evaluated by greha probably once you have a specific query you can uh, send us a mail on the greha web mail id or my email id in the end and we can discuss this uh, project wise because uh, as we say each project have its own pluses and minuses there can be some things which work for some project something cannot work for some projects so if you have any specific issues but generally challenge yahi hota hai ki pura project process evaluate karta hai greha if you leave some parts of the process then we are not evaluating the whole sustainability intent but there are still ways of doing it <coughs> okay so uh, one of the most interesting examples i take every time and people who attended my presentation have seen this many other times but again i do this again and again because this is one of the very interesting examples to see with modern architecture and sustainability hand go hand in hand and i think so this uh, uh, workshop which we are doing i think so harana is one of the Co partner in this uh, workshop, and this example is from Haryana Panchkula itself. Uh, and I'll be asking questions now. So, uh, everybody ready for questions and answers? You see this building, which is uh, Harida Akshay Ujha Bhavan in Panchkula. It's a five-star rated Vihar building. 
Now, interesting thing about this project, one of, uh, it has many interesting uh, uh, parameters. And if you are uh, near this building, I will suggest you to go visit it. It's worth visiting once at least. Now, when you see this uh, facade, it's a whole glass facade, and you see the shadow happening at some places. And, and if I show you the plan, this is the plan. And in this, this is the facade which has the glass. Now, query for you all is, if this is my glass facade, say this facade, can you guess which side is the north direction of this building? So you can choose uh, the left side, the right side, the top side, and the bottom side as north. If you can answer in your chat, or I'll suggest chat, okay, otherwise, mic can you on or off can is a bit lengthy. So you, anyways, uh, Achana said that you all can unmute yourself and you can ask your queries also. So my query would be, can you guess which is the north in this building? Guys, come on, 45 minutes left. Lots of things to discuss. Abhi toh bhoti basics mein choose, uh, discuss kiya. Mohit, right, left and right. Okay, Mohit has given me a right. This is the north. Any other guesses? Give me one or two more guesses, please. Anyone? Rare side. Okay, this is the north. Man Manish. Any other guess? Anyone? Do or bache? Kisi ko open niche bhi guess karna to kar sakta hai. Phir hamare paas option hai ka discuss karna ka. Do side saar bache hamare paas. Okay, so uh, uh, Marish, uh, you are right. This is the north. Uh, I think uh, Pradeep Kumar has also raised his hand. Okay. Pradeep Kumar has also raised his hand. So the, I think so. You said they can unmute yourself themselves, right? Guys, you are open to unmute yourself. I think so. Uh, that Achana has made it clear. So if you have anything to say, just unmute and say it's an interactive session, not a problem. Uh, Pradeep, uh, you were saying something. Big windows on the rear, rear, rear. Okay, this side is the north, it's Manisha. Uh, so, uh, Pradeep, who are raised their hand. Praveen, you can uh, ask whatever you're saying, you can chat, you can unmute yourself and speak whatever you want. Uh, everybody can just unmute, can unmute and speak. Uh, koi baat south, uh, Praveen Kumar said south. South, South as in bottom. Well, Akash, you got quite a range of answers. Uh, yes, I can continue. Don't worry. Yes. So uh, the correct answer is uh, this is the uh, north. Uh, this is uh, the back side, which shows uh, the service parking area. This is your north. And the glass facade was actually the south. And the answer would have been clear if you would have focused on the sun. North side mein generally direct sun nahi aata. Dusra answer aapko kaise milta hai? Agar aap iske Upar ke aur niche ke window designing dekhte. Now, the north and south facades, I do not require my windows to be tilted towards an angle because glare cut nahi karna mujhe. If it's an east or west facade window, then I need to clear glare it. Uh, tilt it a bit to cut the glare in. Uh, uh, one of the most interesting things about this building is it's the glass building. Dekhte na, sabse pehla, uh, hai, yaar, isme AC laga hoga. Now, this building is a 100% non AC building. Interesting. Itna sara kaanch, wo bhi south facade or non AC building. How? So, uh, we all live in NCR region, uh, almost all of us. Not Adit, he's from the Muso, but uh, interestingly, this building is designed as a big desert cooler. A desert cooler, we all know. You have the side ke parde, jaha pani girta hai. Uh, uh, hawa, wind comes in from all the three sides, and then it is pushed into the space. When, when it is cooler because of the water water vapor, which has which, which it has picked it from the side panes. Isme kya hota hai? All we, we have all studied uh, hot air rises, uh, cold air takes a place. That's the wind uh, flow which is created. So kya hai? This the glass pane which you see, it's on south facade with some shading but not much. Some shading but not much. So what happens is this uh, this office space becomes hot very. Uh, drastically and uh, uh, as we say, all said hot air rises so, you have boxes, these are called the solar chimneys and some places it is extruded on the north facade as well and these are all rcc jo aapka good uh, cement is a uh, cement concrete is a good uh, thermal uh, mass so ye south side mein lagaye kyun lagaye ab isme kya kiya unhone andar ki taraf inside the space when you see you have ventilators on top i'll i'll uh, open my video so that you can see my signs Okay, so what they've done is uh, they've made these ventilators on top. 
basically so that what happens is jo bhi hot air uh, gets generated it uh, takes out through these chimneys to the roof now which which make sure that there is a negative pressure created in this space ab positive pressure kahan se laate hain what they do is what you see is coated jo bhi coated planning and helps you doing this uh, cross ventilation but maine thoda extra kiya hai what they do is there is something called misting in the central courtyard on the summer mornings literally cooler क्या किया पानी लिया पानी को स्प्रिंकल कर दिया सेंट्रल कोटियार्ड में जो हम पुराने घरों में याद है अगर बचपन में नाना नानी इधर जाते हैं तब करवाया जाता था छत पे जाके पानी डालो इससे छत ठंडी हो जाए ऑटोमेटिकली स्पेस ठंडा होने लगे शाम को लिटरली वॉट दैन एस दे स्प्रिंकल वाटर इन द कोटियार्ड और पंचकुलाइज ड्राई हॉट एंड ड्राई क्लाइमेट प्लीज डू नॉट ट्राई दिस इन probably jammu kashmir or in maharashtra it will not work it's a hot and dry climate strategy of a passive designing so uh, one sprinkle kiya what happens is basically then this is a positive pressure this is a negative pressure so automatically air starts blowing into the office spaces but hum log design kya karte hain hum apne corridor walls banate hain inhone ek aur interesting cheez ki jo unki corridor walls the usme bottom mein at this side they have again the ventilators so if you cut the cross section of the room at the bottom and the left you have the uh, ventilators in the corridor wall on right on the top in the solar chimneys you have the ventilators again so there is a draft created in the whole room automatically and that is what which makes the room air cooled not conditioned air cooled throughout the whole summers and that's how you, they actually be thermally comfortable throughout the whole summer also in the designing you see these Uh, bad spaces, bad spaces are the uh, no use spaces or less use spaces. The toilets, the staircases, the pantries have been kept on the western facades and the eastern facades so that heat gain is reduced within the work environment. There are lots of openings which have been kept so that cross ventilation is possible wherever possible. North facades have been increased wherever possible. So all these are still possible with modern architecture and. Use of passive uh, systems, and there are many buildings to showcase. This is one of the most interesting one I have found. So I, uh, it's a very old example which I used since last ten years, but I still prefer using this because it has very interesting parts of uh, designing in it as an architect. Uh, another thing, uh, one of the most important thing about this building is we must have heard of two terms in uh, recent times: net positive and net negative, uh, uh, neutral buildings. In terms of mostly energy. but this building has achieved net positive in terms of water during rainy season so what happens is <coughs> uh, hear me clearly what happens is even a single drop of water is not imported during rainy seasons even for drinking repeat myself not even a single drop of water is taken from outside during rainy seasons for even domestic purposes drinking also so jitna barish anka barish mein aata hai sara store hota hai segregate hota hai and reuse hota hai whether it's flushing whether it's drinking whether it's uh, landscaping everything is rain water in those 3 to 4 months of particular rain basically and very rare examples to find water uh, uh, net positive water buildings during rainy seasons in some of the uh, areas Uh, must visit it if you are see uh, if you are around this area it's a worth visiting of our campus so these lines which you see these are the misting lines they have halka droplets leke sprinkle kar de diye and even if you see in the courtyard they have glazed tiles at the border so jitna pani condense hota hai wo bhi wapas isi cycle mein chala jata hai the water which they are using again and again so this is same as cooler mein pani generally kya hai garmiyon mein din mein do baar bharna padta hai because the uh, air is drier but in uh, less monsoon or less heat uh, times Uh, uh, during the whole day, you can just use one sprinkling to meet the compliances to uh, become thermally comfortable. So that's the same concept that you have used here. Misting. So these are the tilted windows in east and west, so that there is no glare coming inside the spaces. Uh, example from Maharashtra, Govardhan Eco Village. This is an ESCON campus. Uh, can anybody guess what is the building material over here? Type, 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 fast, fast, fast. We have just, I think, so half an hour. Lots of things to cover. Lateral, lateral. No, no. This is a uh, uh, mud stabilized blocks, basically. Uh, your, this is all mud. Interestingly, uh, just five percent of that is cement, and rest all is mud. So this is worth going and visiting as a campus. You can take your family along. Uh, uh, Ascon, in the Goddard Eco Village's website, book a room, go there, and you will actually feel what sustainable living is. 
सामने अभी सस्टेनेबल डिजाइनिंग की बात करें दिस इज सस्टेनेबल लिविंग एवरीथिंग इज सस्टेनेबल होता है सो अदर देन बी ह्यूमन बीइंग्स नथिंग कम्स इन नथिंग गोस आउट एज सिंपल एज दैट वेरी क्लियर फॉर नाउ ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी सो एनर्जी वाटर फूड एवरीथिंग इज देयर इन द कैंपस इवन द कंस्ट्रक्शन मटेरियल इज फ्रॉम द कैंपस सो द मड फ्रॉम द कैंपस इज यूज्ड फॉर कंस्ट्रक्शन अह दिस इज एक्चुअली लोकेटेड इन थाने रीजन सो इफ यू Know your geography well. You know that in Maharashtra you have the Western Ghats. Basically, this is uh, towards the uh, windward sides of the um, uh, West uh, Western Ghats, towards the sea side of the Western Ghats. So it receives lots of rain because of that, and that's why water uh, is ample avail availability of water is there if they store properly. So that that's what they have done. Uh, if you are aware, the architect of this previous one was. Uh, Uh, I don't, don't remember the last uh, project agreed, uh, but this project is done by Chitra Ma'am, Chitra Vishwanathan from Bangalore. So uh, she is well known for sustainability designing as well across India. Uh, what they have done is uh, everything is local, everything is from the site. Uh, there is no air conditioning. Ham uh, log, I think so. I went uh, for the site visit in June or July, and we were I was there on the final site visit. And literally, we were required to actually wear a blanket in the night with no fans. in june and july can you imagine june july heat and we are using blankets without any ac without any fan that's what sustainable designing is actually speaking uh, it has on modern facilities so it has a swimming pool also so now kuch family ko le jane ko bol raha hu it's worth taking your family on a picnic sustainable picnic actually uh, it has an ayurvedic shala uh, everything grown there is that's what you eat there's nothing which comes from outside uh, this is the water collection pond जो पीछे आपको थोड़े से बाहर दिख रहे हैं वेस्टर्न गार्ड्स फ्रॉम देयर ऑल द रेंज इज कलेक्टेड इन द फर्स्ट टाइम दिस इज द कलेक्शन पॉन्ड्स सो देयर आर थ्री पॉन्ड्स व्हिच दे हैव मेड द फर्स्ट वन इज द कलेक्शन पॉन्ड टू यू नीड स्प्रिंकलर्स इन गोवा ह्यूमिड क्लाइमेट नो एज आई सेड प्रीवियसली द पंचकुला प्रोजेक्ट पैसिव डिजाइन सिस्टम विल नॉट वर्क इन गोवा और महाराष्ट्र इट्स अ हॉट एंड ड्राई क्लाइमेट डिजाइन पैसिव सिस्टम Uh, which cannot be called again please do not copy paste as it is you have to design it for your own uh, usage or your climate which you are designing for your project for uh, something else will work in goa probably there are uh, passive design systems in goa uh, nah, there is one project which i have seen apna charge kuriya you have that uh, museum the art museum it's one of the very interesting design it's again a non ac space in uh, goa on the uh, uh, panji main uh, road the Uh, just near the beach i don't know the name of the beach also so her climate her city ka apna climate hai that's what i'm saying just do not copy paste your glass blocks here and there it's not worth it it's not literally worth it as an architect uh, so these are the local materials which are used uh, for building construction over there uh, uh, the question for you in this i am explaining the other three images can anybody guess what is this image of the top right corner till i explain the other three this is biogas so all the waste which uh, they generate from food waste the solid waste uh, everything is biogas converted and they use it for cooking basically they have solar installed so uh, the electricity is also self reliant they do not rely on the grid electricity hot water is this is basically also solar and any guesses ye kya hai image kis cheez ki image anyone 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 type in no answers then i'll move forward probably so this is basically a natural stp which is basically not a reed bed reed bed has its own uh, il, uh, limitations this is called as soil biotechnology uh, this is a uh, uh, it bombay patent and uh, this is also used in many of the developer projects in uh, maharashtra region because uh, we have a misconception that uh, passive uh, water treatment systems require a lot of land this is an advanced uh, design technology in which uh, they have made sure that the land use is also not much uh, the stp is also still workable without any smell and with all they just require a basic pumping of water there is no chemical there is nothing and this is what you get as natural stp the photo which you see is actually 5 meters above the ground so what they have done is they have made a big soil pot uh, the soil tanker with aggregates uh, with boulders and then uh, mud and they just sprinkle the uh, uh, waste water on top and it naturally seeps the water they have done the plantation the uh, organic waste from our uh, waste water is used as manure for these plants and uh, that's what is used for treating it this is a primary treatment 
once you want to use, and you can use it in landscaping directly if you want to use it in flushing or any other purposes you just use a secondary treatment after this and use it directly for secondary treatments and so now what we are doing is we are uh, just discussing some projects what they have done to become griha compliant and i think so that's what we are looking for that uh, how small strategies actually count griha is nothing complex griha is nothing big it's small small things which matter every small thing which we do as an architect as a contractor as a uh, client it actually impacts your building and the users and that's what we are trying to see how sustainable buildings are different than conventional glass boxes basically which we build uh, so this is it kanpur csc building that's a computer science block uh, kanpur ki garmi sabne suni hai bahut famous hai so what they have done is they have in this project it's a non ac building so aapka jo ground floor hai wo pura natural water water bodies ki wajah se cross ventilated hai and that's why it's all non ac uh, they have placed water bodies from where the wind is coming in lots of green areas even the roofs are properly shaded with high sri panes solar pv pergolas so that chat se kam se kam garmi aaye basically uh ek minute is making which so this is the top of the roofs and even if you see the planning so these are all mature uh, iska inauguration very interesting baat hai this is yeah, this photo is basically your inauguration of this building photograph now jab bhi aap uh, as an architect close your eyes and see aapki building ka inauguration ho raha hai so what you will see is a barren land a building in the middle and abhi abhi khareed ke laaye hue 15000 ke saplings which have planted for the chief minister to come and come and cut the ribbon interestingly uh, but this building is the photograph of inauguration of this building so the chief minister uh, that time chief minister came and inaugurated the building to bolta aap mazak kar rahe ho aisa possible nahi hai ki abhi abhi bani hai isme dekho ped kitne bade bade hain beech mein to hamara mindset ban gaya hai inauguration means barren land sara kaat ke building khadi hai and then you have just planted some saplings right now so if you see the planning they are trying to preserve these trees which are coming within the building footprint as well that's what making the building contextual to your site as an architect means it's not copy pasting a building and copy pasting at some place it's just using the site as your site feature uh, uh we all know using uh, grass grids basically this is uh, we were discussing to preserve uh, trees preserve landscaping and we must have heard the term of urban heat island effect as i'm sure as an architect we have heard this term just to be clearer urban heat island effect we must have heard it we must have experienced it but when happens what happens is basically i'll give you a very basic example uh, we all have used cars we all use car right gaadi sab chalate hain hai na and uh, jab hum open space mein parking dhoondte hain to we all look for shading i think so i have one of the examples ye bahut uh, classic example hai jab gaadi park karni hai to hame shade chahiye that is because do ghante baad wapas aaunga to gaadi garam ho jayegi now logical mujhe shade chahiye अब हमारी गाड़ी किस चीज से बनी होती है कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ आर कार प्लास्टिक को हटा दो तो इट्स ग्लास एंड मेटल राइट नाउ लेट्स गो टू बिल्डिंग्स व्हाट आर आर बिल्डिंग्स ऑफ इट्स ग्लास एंड मेटल एंड कंक्रीट व्हिच इज अगेन अ बिग थर्मल मास जब मुझे गाड़ी पार्क करनी है दो घंटे के लिए आई रिक्वायर शेड बट जब बिल्डिंग बना रहा हूँ अस्सी साल के लिए तो मुझे कांच का डब्बा चाहिए वेर हैज बीन द लॉजिक कहाँ गया लॉजिक so that is what is missing in the modern control c control v architecture which we are having now on our days glass box using of glass is important it's a daylight integration in the building but optimal use of everything is hamare pehle sam padhaya jata tha i'm not sure uh, all of us have uh, i hope all of us have had this uh, purana slogan or what we say as uh, excess of everything is bad literally excess of everything is bad you have to optimize anything and that's what result in sustainability so uhi is again the same thing how so very easy example in your house kya hota hai hum tire puri road uh, jo aap 6 meter ki road banate hain as a mandate requirement uh, by government of india or government of states for fire tend requirement hum hamesha dusro pe dalne mein hame maza aate hain to hum kya bolte hain yaar hum to road nahi banana chahte the par ye to requirement of fire tender ki ab kya karu 6 meter road to deni padegi So I'll give you an example. <coughs> Again, it's a government project. I hope I have said somewhere here. This uh, Indra Parayaran Bhavan must have seen it many of times, or at least heard it. It's the government of India's uh, uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change uh, head office. Now, what you see here is that's the fire tender road. 
आपको रोड हार्डवेयर करने की जरूरत इसलिए पड़ी क्योंकि आपकी प्लानिंग ऐसी थी आपने रोड हार्डवेयर इसलिए नहीं करी क्योंकि फायर टेंडर मांगता था रिक्वायरमेंट मांगता था और दिस इज वेरी क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल वेयर प्रॉपर आर्किटेक्चरल डिजाइन हेल्प यू मेक श्योर दैट यू आर स्टिल अचीविंग द पर्पज बट मेकिंग श्योर दिस डिजाइन इज सस्टेनेबल So what they have done is, if you see this, uh, and if you are in Delhi, do go and visit this building. It's worth visiting as a planning perspective. So there are two gates. एक ये है और एक जहाँ से फोटोग्राफ ली गई है वो एक गेट है. तो क्या होता है? गाड़ी यहाँ से आती है and it goes directly into the basement. तो जो मैरी कोरोन हम खिलाते हैं बिल्डिंग के चारों तरफ वो नहीं है यहाँ. कब? Go inside the basement directly. So if my car is not going around the building all times, I am not required to give it a actually hard surface throughout the day, throughout the year. Up, what they have done is they have used something called grass creed pavers in this fire tender road. This, and that's why I'm showing you a government printed example. If government can do this, private में तो बहुत कुछ possible है. <coughs> There's always a uh, issue of government projects adopting new things. This is one of the ministry building, and that's why as an example we are discussing it. So what they have done is they have basement till here and uh, set back, छोड़ के इतना इनका पूरा basement है. उसके ऊपर उन्होंने ये grass creed pavers लगाए हैं and उसके ऊपर पूरा grass लगा दिया. Now Fighter तो will come once in your lifetime, hopefully not not at all. उस एक instant के लिए आपने पूरा hard drive कर दिया, why? क्योंकि fighter वालों ने मांगा था. ये नहीं कि हमने design कर बढ़ किए, fighter वालों ने मांगा था. So what they've done is this uh, this whole six meter road across the campus is green. जो building के चारों तरफ का fighter road है. What they you see here is the pedestrian access to the building. Now what they've done is interesting grass pavers so that it's easier for walk for people inside the building. बट अगेन बिना सोचे समझे हम डिजाइन लगाएंगे तो चैलेंजेस कुछ भी आ सकता है नाउ इफ यू सी इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट गो देयर ऑन द लाइव साइड यू सी दैट दिस एरिया इज एक्चुअली कार्पेटेड कैन बी गेस व्हाई दे हैव कार्पेट जस्ट दिस द पेडेस्ट्रियन एक्सेस इज कार्पेटेड एनी गेसेस व्हाई एनीवन इस पेडेस्ट्रियन एक्सेस को कार्पेट क्यों किया उन्होंने इंटेंट अच्छा था चलो थोड़ा सा चलने के लिए हार्ड पेड एंड सॉफ्टवेयर वेर या मिक्सर हो जाएगा दैट्स वेरी गुड इंटेंट बट यू नेवर नो व्हाट योर डिजाइन विल बी इंपैक्टेड बाय सो ने क्या कि एंड आई थिंक सो लेडीज हैव द आंसर यू हैव मल्टीपल लेडी विजिटर्स टू द मिनिस्ट्री बिल्डिंग्स अब क्या हुआ थोड़ा सा भी अगर उसमें सॉफ्ट एरिया होता है जहां पे आप चल रहे हैं एंड देयर आर लॉट्स ऑफ इंटरनेशनल विजिटर्स एंड लेडीज विद विद दिस विजिटर्स सो आपकी हील जूते की हील उसमें अटैक के टूटने के चांसेस थे और टूटे थे यस पंकज सो एज सिंपल एज हील कैन चेंज योर डिजाइन द इंटेंट वाज वेरी गुड बट इफ यू अगेन कॉपी पेस्ट थिंग्स विदाउट थिंकिंग थ्रू व्हाट एंड हाउ योर बिल्डिंग विल बी यूज्ड यू विल नेवर नो क्या चीज इफेक्ट करने वाली है आपको बिल्डिंग एज एन आर्किटेक्ट सो नाउ यू गो इट्स दिस पोर्शन इज स्टिल कार्पेटेड बट रेस्ट ऑल इज स्टिल ग्रीन बट देन वी एज एन आर्किटेक्ट एंड दैट्स व्हाट वी हैव टॉक्ड ड्यूरिंग आवर आर्किटेक्चर डिजाइंस दैट एनीथिंग इन दैट Our design. So, think through what as a design feature you are copy pasting because uh, it is very important. Okay. Now, during construction, proper segregation is what we are looking for. Proper segregation, low wastages. Uh, the ZIT Kanpur building, which I was showing, there are lots of green areas. No, it is reduce the concrete use all along the building to reduce dust pollution. No, it is not. To Manish, I didn't get your query, or is it a query, or is a comment? Yes, obviously it has reduced the hardware. That's the example I'm showing you. But uh, the issue is uh, sustainability integration has to throw through with the usage as well. उनका पूरा pedestrian में जो grass creed pavers, grass and concrete pavers लगाने का intent था. Yes, obviously Manish. Yes, that's why they have used it so that hard areas are almost none on the site, and they have good population. They have good uh, uh, absorption of heat, and it's much more cool space around the building itself. So, so that while sweeping the the grass creed previous, all along the building to reduce dust pollution, the grass creeds, so that the while sweeping the road, again still I'm not clear that dust do not. Uh, obviously, so, uh, greening uh, one of the major challenge with greening the uh, greening any spaces uh, and many of the times you'll see it in the NCR region developers side. That उन्होंने approvals लेने के लिए grass creed pavers लगाएं जैसे basic 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 fifty fifty or sixty forty percent grass hard and soft but बाद में जब residents आ जाते हैं तो उसको निकाल के फेंक देते हैं और दोबारा पूरा hard कर लेते हैं क्योंकि एक 
जो आपके ग्रास एरिया है वहां डस्ट बहुत ज्यादा होता है एंड ग्रास गो नहीं करता बिकॉज ऑफ द टायर मूवमेंट तो देर आर इश्यूज विद ईच डिजाइन स्ट्रेटेजी विच यू आर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग यू नीड टू बी अवेयर ऑफ इट एंड टेक एन इनफॉर्म डिसीजन दैट्स वॉट सस्टेनेबिलिटी इज एक्चुअली स्पीकिंग so this is construction management plan of it kanpur wala building you see lots of green areas green trees which have been preserved they are made during construction boundaries so that they do not spill out they do not spill during construction and destroy the virgin areas as much as uh, uh, possible they reduce their uh, pollution levels during construction this is it shimla so you see the barricading which was done properly so that there is no land slides and proper mixing Host has asked you start my video. Okay, start my video. Start my video. There might be limitations in uh, bandwidth, but I'll start my video. Don't worry. So these are tree plantation, uh, tree transplantation which happened. So when we say transplantation in, is accepted, we do these side visits as you are aware. Now in these side visits during the whole process, if there are no trees, no, no leaves which are coming back after three four years when the construction is finished, it is taken to be as a cut tree, and then you have to make sure that you are planting in the uh, required ratio. Uh, transplantation is only accepted within the site itself uh, now you have uh, uh, various ways of preserving trees so we do not say how to preserve it we say preserve it ab ab aise bhi preserve kar sakte hain thoda cost invest karke aise hi preserve kar sakte hain isse sasta tarika hai ha hai ab aise hi preserve kar sakte hain so there is no right and wrong you need to make sure that things are done as intended you can innovate in your strategies and meet the compliances there's no stopping you you can uh, you there's nobody asking you to invest 1000 and crores or rupees to meet in making compliances uh, to meet compliances it can be a zero cost strategy as well but you have to be uh, make sure that you are compliant to the requirements intent of the requirements so hum aapko intent samjhate hain usko meet kaise karna hai totally aapki choice hai aap bahut sare paise kharch karke bhi you can be compliant and you can invest less and still be compliant so it's all your choices and that's what makes your building costly or no cost less cost and sustainability it kanpur so again a less costly method all the cement bags were used for barricading uh, the sedimentation tank so that water jo bahar jata hai apne sath uh, pollutions leke na jaye uh, sand uh, aggregate and it leaves within the construction site itself and your drains do not get clogged during the whole construction site uh this is uh, i think tamil nadu central university of tamil nadu their own sedimentation tank this is uh, th the right, left is tamil nadu this is during construction practices uh, so that you make sure that uh, the time is a resource you do not waste it because time is wasted many other times during rains because the site becomes inaccessible because you are not channeling it properly the water rains which you are receiving water is also a resource if you channel it properly you can store it and reuse it for curing and many other purposes during construction बट क्योंकि वो हमारी साइड ही ऐसी होती है पूरा ही साइड हमारा स्टोरेज टैंक बन जाता है इट देयर अ लॉट्स ऑफ टाइम वेस्ट आल्सो व्हिच हैपन सो दीस चैनल्स आर बीइंग आस्क्ड टू मेक ड्यूरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन टू मेक श्योर दैट ड्यू योर साइट इज एक्सेसिबल ड्यूरिंग द कोल कंस्ट्रक्शन फेज साबिक बैंगलोर दिस इज द टॉप साइल व्हिच वाज प्रिजर्वड एंड विद दैट यू हैव द इरोजन चैनल सो दैट द सोइल डजंट लीव द साइट एनीबॉडी कैन गेस व्हाट इज दिस एंड व्हाई इज दिस Uh, fast, fast, fast! We just have ten minutes left remaining, and lots of things to cover. I'll just wrap it in center somewhere, then probably <laughs> I'll just have to close it somewhere. So this is a wheel washing facility. Now, basically, what happens? The intent is anything going out or coming in, the wheels get wet. One is uh, when it is uh, the trucks are running inside the site, the dust doesn't get airborne; it sticks to the tire. Second is when it's going outside, it doesn't take. जनरली आपने देखा होगा कि बाहर की रोड गायब हो चुकी होती है ड्यूरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन सो इट मेक श्योर इट डजेंट टेक पॉल्यूट आउटसाइड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ड्यूरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन बट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉमन सेंस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अब जो इसका इफ एनी बडी कैन गिव मी एन आंसर वट इज द मिनिमम डेप्थ ऑफ दिस वाटर व्हील वॉशिंग पेट कुछ मिनिमम डेप्थ होनी चाहिए या कुछ भी चलेगी हम करना क्या चाहते हैं इससे अगेन अंडरस्टैंड द इंटेंट हमारा इंटेंट क्या है टायर का पैरामीटर नीला करना डेप्थ इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट एट ऑल इफ यू इवन मेक दस एम एम का गड्ढा विद द टायर लेंथ पैरामीटर लेंथ एज अथ ऑफ द पेट स्टिल विल वर्क बट क्या ऐसे ही एक साइड पे कर उन्हें आधा मीटर का व्हील वॉशिंग मशीन बना दी इंटेंट क्या हुआ अब इतना सारा पानी देख के कोई उसके अंदर से ना जाए हमें तो आदत है रोडों पर पानी भरे हुए देखने की एंड एवरीबडी वॉज एक्चुअली बाईपासिंग दैट व्हील वॉशिंग फिट 
<laughs> Sorry. So you need to understand the intent of why we are asking you to do things. Everything has its own, own importance. If you understand the intent, you will make sure that it happens. This is all for your and your client's savings. There's nothing extra which you are investing. This is very basic common sense. बिल्डिंग हम बोलते हैं बहुत बार रेस्ट्रिक्शन हमारी साइट में होता है बट इट्स द रेस्ट्रिक्शन इज इन आवर डिजाइन एनीथिंग इज पॉसिबल इफ वी एज एन आर्किटेक्ट वांट टू डू इट इन डिजाइन सो इफ एवरीथिंग वी कंट्रोल एट द डिजाइन स्टेज ऑटोमेटिकली योर कॉस्ट कैन नॉट गो हाई आपने सब कुछ तो इसमें रिड्यूस कर लिया आपने मेक श्योर किया कि मेरा लाइट का बिल ज्यादा ना आए आपने मेक श्योर किया कि मेरा थर्मल कंफर्ट मीट हो जाए बिना एसी के आपने मेक श्योर कर दिया मैंने ग्लास हाइड ना लगाऊं बिकॉज़ यू हैव मेड अ प्रॉपर शेडिंग फॉर योर विंडोज the solar uh, sun is not coming incident directly on your windows in summer everything you have made sure in the design why would your cost increase you say renewable energy why renewable energy jo maine cost bachaya i invest in renewable energy because all my demands are already reduced then i go for higher efficient systems jitna maine pehle energy bachana tha maine isse bacha liya then i use higher efficient systems further reduction in my demands of energy and then i go for renewable energy अभी क्या होता है लोगों को लगता है अरे मैंने आई हैव इंस्टॉल्ड लॉट्स ऑफ सोलर आई एम सस्टेनेबल हाउ व्हाई सिर्फ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी लगाना इज नॉट सस्टेनेबल यू आर एक्चुअली मच मोर अनसस्टेनेबल देन व्हेन यू आर विदाउट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी बेसिकली लोग वी हैव दिस टेंडेंसी अरे मेरा तो सारा एनर्जी जनरेट हो रहा है आई कैन यूज एज मच एज वांट व्हाई भाई एवरीथिंग इज कॉस्ट एट कॉस्ट सो ऑप्टिमाइजिंग एवरीथिंग इज इंपॉर्टेंट इन सस्टेनेबिलिटी ज़्यादा लगाना इज़ नॉट सस्टेनेबिलिटी कम लगाना इज़ नॉट सस्टेनेबिलिटी ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑप्टिमल यूज ऑफ ऑल रिसोर्सेस दैट्स व्हाट सस्टेनेबिलिटी व्हिच क्रिएट्स टारगेटिंग ये वो एग्जांपल आ गया दोबारा सो आई विल नॉट गो थ्रू दिस अगेन एट द एंड ये होता है जो बुरा गुड़गांव करता है एंड नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ द टायर 2 एंड टायर 3 सिटीज आल्सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ द ग्लास बॉक्स व्हिच वी आर कॉपी पेस्टिंग द कंट्री उदयपुर जाओ राजस्थान जाओ एनीवेयर इट्स ग्लास बॉक्स व्हाई Rajasthan glass box why are you making it is not required hilly regions shimla kaach ka dabba chahiye kyun intent samajh ke implement karna hai hame baad mein ye hoga aapne ka glass lagaya tha day lighting ke liye day lighting ke sath glare aa raha hai to main curtain lagaunga fir curtain lagaunga to light nahi aayegi to main light jalaunga light jalaunga glass to lagaya tha heat ke nahi andar aa gaya to ac bada chalaunga everything is correlated one small mistake which we have done of putting uh, glass has resulted in so much investment throughout the life cycle of the building this is heat intake in a glass in a normal brick wall csc ab ek aur challenge hota hai human behavior ka uh, we are less left with just 10 5 minutes i'll just rush to so uh, it kanpur lab building can you see a tube light it's there but again a problem kya hota hai bahut sari jagah hum या ब्लाइंड्स देते हैं इन्होंने दिया ही नहीं है मुझे पता है मेरे रूम में ग्लेयर नहीं आएगा किसी भी टाइम पे तो मैंने ब्लाइंड्स दिए नहीं है डालो क्या डाल दो इवन वी हैव दिस टेंडेंसी इवन इट्स अ नेचुरल लाइट डे लाइट कमिंग इनसाइड माय रूम आई हैव अ टेंडेंसी ऑफ पुटिंग ऑन द ब्लाइंड्स एंड वर्किंग विद आर्टिफिशियल लाइटिंग वी हैव बिकम दोस नॉक्टर्नल एनिमल्स कि हमें लाइट चाहिए हमें डे लाइट पसंद नहीं आती समहाउ सो द डिजाइन शुड बी फैसिलिटेट इट शुड फैसिलिटेट पीपल टू यूज दीस थिंग्स Talk about cost ventilation. आज का कोई सा भी फ्लैट उठा लीजिए मॉडर्न डे फ्लैट कॉस्ट वेंटिलेशन के नाम पे क्या है हमारे पास एक विंडो और एक दरवाजा ऑल हाई राइज बिल्डिंग्स ले लीजिए एनी अपार्टमेंट विच यू लेवल अगेन so this is coal india limited uh, i'll come on cross ventilation give me one second that will be the last thing which i'll explain so this is coal india uh, calcutta what they've done is hame lagta hai jab solar lagate to wo ek hi option hai hamare paas chhat pe lagane ka wo wo bhi banane ka basically However, if you use it as a design element, you can do wonders. This is Coal India Limited in Calcutta. They have made sure that the solar panel does not look as a separate element. And 
इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ इट्स इज डिजाइन ये फर्स्ट दिन से सोचा होगा उन्होंने कि मुझे सोलर लगाना है ये लास्ट दिन से नहीं सोचा होगा कि मुझे सोलर लगाना है एकदम से बिल्डिंग करना चलो अब सोलर लगाते हैं तो एक ही ऑप्शन बचता है छत पे लगाना सो द मोर यू इंटीग्रेट इन योर डिजाइन वी एज एन आर्किटेक्ट हैव द सॉल्यूशन फॉर एवरीथिंग वी नीड टू बी ओपन फॉर दैट सॉल्यूशन बेसिकली सो इस वाटर में जाने से पहले थर्मल के ऊपर बात कर रहे थे अपन तो तो नॉट एज द मॉडर्न आर्किटेक्चर इन टेक योर ओन बेडरूम आई एम नॉट श्योर माय बेडरूम हैज दिस इशू बट एटलीस्ट होपफुली योर बेडरूम वुड नॉट डू बी दिस वे बट हर बेडरूम में एक विंडो है और एक दरवाजा है दैट्स ऑल दैट्स द एंड ऑफ क्रॉस वेंटिलेशन अब टॉक अबाउट ऑल द हाई राइज बिल्डिंग्स द मोमेंट यू गो अबव 10 मीटर्स 10 स्टोरीज अगर मैंने 10 मीटर के ऊपर आपकी सारी विंडो हुई स्लाइडर विंडो होती है आजकल तो यू हैव द कॉमन स्पेक्स जनरली इवन इफ यू हैव अ हैच ओपनिंग थोड़ा सा भी खोलूंगा तो इतनी तेज विंड स्पीड अंदर आती है कि सारे दरवाजे बैम तो मेरे पास अगर बाहर का मौसम अच्छा भी है तो भी कोई ऑप्शन नहीं है बट आई टू क्लोज द विंडो क्लोज द डोर पुट ऑन द ए सी बिकॉज द करेंट डिजाइन डज नॉट गिव मी दैट ऑप्शन यूज दैट रूम फॉर नेचुरल वेंटिलेशन प्रोजेक्ट एट द एंड एक मुंबई प्रोजेक्ट ने ऐसे जस्ट चेंज द डिजाइन ऑफ देर विंडो टू मेक श्योर दैट दे आर Use facilitating use of cross ventilation. क्या किया उन्होंने सेम सेम सब कुछ सेम रखा उन्होंने क्या किया जो विंडो का मेरा स्लाइडिंग वाला डिजाइन था उसको चेंज करके उसको टॉप हंग कर दिया सो वॉट इट डिड वॉज वॉन्स इट डिड टॉप हंग वन इट मेक श्योर द रेन इज नॉट कमिंग इन सेकेंड विद द ओपनिंग एट द टॉप हंग आई कैन मॉड्यूलेट माई ओपनिंग एंड द विंड स्पीड ऑल्सो अब मेरे को कम विंड स्पीड चाहिए तो मैं थोड़ा सा ओपन करता हूँ नीचे से सो दैट विंड टिंग in it doesn't start gushing inside my room space so these small changes actually in your design make sure that your building is sustainable itna chhota sa change kaam bas so again it will not work everywhere depending on wind speed and your city profile so same as in water reduce your demands then go for in, uh, treated water in your rain water and your treated water usage india is almost at the water stress level and we all know one of two one or two cities in africa which have gone for uh, which were out of water 3 4 uh, years back itself cape town one of the cities might have heard it on the news uh, i'll take some extra time uh, 50 tak tha mera time but 12 tak main khatam karta hu so that i give you 10 minutes because we are doing q and a between itself koi question aap puch sakte hain ab landscaping ke liye i'll ask very basic uh, example for you from you guys ek aisa element not in most of the areas but especially in the northern region in your design element which has no use at all and i think so adit mentioned uh, uh, landscaping uh, is one of his forte so i'll be expecting uh, <laughs> some replies on those front one element which has no use at all in your current northern climate architecture especially in the ncr region but it is found all cities across all times and major copy based across the city avenues एक ऐसा एलिमेंट एक ट्री स्पीसीज नॉट आई नॉट कॉल इट अ ट्री आल्सो एक स्पीसीज इसका कोई काम नहीं है बट हम सब जगह लगाया जाता है और वो सिर्फ और सिर्फ हम हम एज एन आर्किटेक्ट की वैसे लगता है एनी गेसेस यू ऑल आर आर्किटेक्ट्स हम अपने आप को कितने अच्छी तरह जानते हैं एनीवन एक ऐसा पौधा या पेड़ जो आप लगवाते हो आदित्य थोड़ा सो ही हैज रिटन स्टोनिया स्कॉलरिस स्कॉलरिस Uh, for everybody, I will ask Adit if you can give the regular names uh, for everyone. Okay, <laughs> if you can give them a regular name, what it is called as a on a non NCR region? Yes, any NCR architect? हम क्या लगवाते हैं सब जगह? Which has no use at all. Our favored palm trees. basically most favored palm trees uh, it has no use at all it has lots of water requirement uh, yes him uh, of palm trees yes. and that's what adit was referring to so what laga kyun ye hum market ki waise main bata so hum sab ne client ko actually no एक 3D बना के दिखाया था राइट वी ऑल रिमेम्बर मेकिंग अ 3D विद पाम ट्रीज इन इट टू द क्लाइंट यस और वो हमने पाम ट्री क्यों लगाया था हमें हमें रीजन पता है क्लाइंट को रीजन नहीं पता है हमें रीजन क्या पता है उसके दो रीजनिंग थे एक ऑब्वियसली हमें अपना एलिवेशन दिखाना था तो अगर मैं नीम ट्री सामने लगा देता तो मेरा एलिवेशन तो दिखता नहीं 
सेकेंडली क्यों लगाएगा पाम ट्री जो थ्री डी बनाता है उससे पूछेगा अगर मैं पाम ट्री की जगह नीम ट्री लगाता हूँ तो मेरा सिस्टम रेंडर ही नहीं करता बिकॉज पाम ट्री में तो पत्तियां ही नहीं नीम ट्री में बहुत सारी पत्तियां हैं उस पत्तियों को मैं रेंडर करने जाता तो मेरा सिस्टम मर जाता बिकॉज ऑफ जस्ट टू दीज मेन रीजन ऑब्वियसली हम कहते हैं पाम सुंदर लगता है बट uh, इतनी गर्मी और इतना इन लॉजिकल वाटर कंजम्पन के बाद आई डोंट थिंक सो दैट शुड बी द लॉजिक ऑफ पुटिंग अ पाम ट्री और मैं 3D दिखाया इतने सारे पाम लगा के बस क्लाइंट को तो नहीं पता वो क्यों लगाया था पाम 3D में सही लग रहा है 3D लगा दो सब जगह और लग गए सारे पाम इंटरेस्टिंगली नो शेड ऑफ लॉट्स ऑफ वाटर वंस यू गो पाम नथिंग एल्स कैन गो ओवर देयर पिट्टी यूजलेस ट्री इन होल्ड हॉट एंड ड्राई क्लाइमेट बट स्टिल एवरीवेयर आई गेस आदित्य There's some correction you were are doing. No use. तब तो हम same थे. Correction किस चीज़ में है? I said used. There was just no, no was not written. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Adil. चलो. So water landscaping is very important and it's one of the major uh, tools to uh, handle rainwater. Uh, we have made cities across all uh, topography which can be flooded. आप जम्मू उठा लो. आप राजस्थान के cities उठा लो. आप मध्य प्रदेश उठा लो आप कैलकटा उठा लो आप महाराष्ट्र उठा लो उड़ीसा उठा लो ऑल टोपोग्राफीज हिली रीजन योर कोस्टल रीजन योर डेजर्ट रीजन एवरी सिटी विच वी कैन मेक इज फ्लैड तो दे समथिंग नॉट विच वी आर डूइंग एक तो स्पेशली एज एन आर्किटेक्ट हम सोचते हैं रेन वाटर तो एम वाले का काम है वो कर लेगा भैया प्रोजेक्ट तो अपना ही है फ्लड तो अपने प्रोजेक्ट में आएगा एम वाले के प्रोजेक्ट में थोड़ी आएगा सो वी डू नॉट टेक केयर ऑफ somehow and landscaping is one of the most important tool to handle rain water and if you go into the newer rating system requirements that's why it is emphasized that you hum abhi kya sochte hain rain water ke naam pe do hi cheeze aa jati hain store and reuse or recharge the third easiest and the most low cost method is proper landscaping design with proper landscaping design you can make sure that rain water aapke site se bahar na jaye you can make sure that rain water is reutilized within site you can make sure that your water is much more ambient to stay in so again uh, drip irrigation low flow fixtures all these things are there i'll just uh, low maintenance stps this is the soil water technology of govardhan eco village which we are discussing this we all know uh, chemical based systems and lastly i'll go with the material sections isko ek kaam karte hain isko skip karte hain and we'll go into the last case studies directly too much of discussion anyways <coughs> so i'll give you i'll leave you with three different case studies which is basically uh, examples of how, what is the importance of roles of three people in the project basically i'll give you here and um, you have the case study section anyways coming in uh, with by individual uh, architects or client themselves i'll give you with these three case studies एक केस स्टडी डिस्कस करेंगे व्हिच इज द रोल ऑफ एन आर्किटेक्ट हाउ इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज वेरी गुड आर्किटेक्ट आर्किटेक्चर इन इटसेल्फ दैट स्मार्ट घर राजकोट इट्स एन ग्रेया अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग प्रोजेक्ट दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ रोल ऑफ आरडब्ल्यूएस और द यूजर्स हाउ दे हैव इंप्रूव्ड व्हाट दे हैव गॉट एंड अचीव्ड व्हाट दे हैव रिस अचीव्ड दिस इज बेसिकली फ्रॉम पुणे वुड्सविले पुणे एंड लास्टली हाउ डेवलपर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वो क्या कर सकता है एज अ क्लाइंट क्या कर सकता है अगेन दिस इज फॉर पुणे रॉयल रेंज काउंटी पुणे this you have in the last one i'll leave it because this you have in detail in the video link which apeksha has shared with you earlier from youtube but these two i'll discuss in brief and close the presentation this is the smart grid uh, rajkot pune this is an affordable housing project uh, so this uh, the cross ventilation thing which we are discussing facilitation in the team design improvements hue to ek to jo ye ventilators hai hai hamari design se gayab ho chuke hain somehow why i don't know but uh, इन्होंने पहले नॉर्मल लोअर क्रॉस वेंटिलेशन दिए थे उससे क्या हुआ देर इज पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ क्लोजिंग इट एयर लीकेज इज वेरी लेस उसके बाद क्या किया उन्होंने स्लाइडर दिया स्लाइडर में दूसरा चैलेंज आया कि स्लाइडर में अगर मैं खोल के रखूं तो बारिश आने के चांसेस बढ़े उसके बाद उन्होंने तीसरा दिया विच इज नाउ द अदर थिंग विच आई वॉज एक्सप्लेनिंग यू विच इज बेसिकली टॉप क्रॉस वेंटिलेटर नाउ आई हैव गिवन अ फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी टू द यूजर इफ आई वॉन्ट क्रॉस वेंटिलेशन माई रूम आई कैन ओपन दिस एंड मेक श्योर rain is not coming in when when is uh, modulated as per my requirement but if i require i want a ac to run i can just close it off and use it basically as a ac space also iska ek aur important cheez designing mein dekhne ko milega aapko because these are affordable house these are one rooms set to agar aapko dekho har do rooms ke beech har do sets ke beech mein ek utility duct 
or the suitable ductus connected with the bathroom and the wc of each flat ab inhone kya kiya inhone this is a 10 story building upar jaake there's a common exhaust which is given on the top of the disc duct so what does this is individual flat owner does not is not required to put a uh, your exhaust fan for their bathrooms and wcs space उससे हुआ क्या ये जो कॉमन एग्जॉस्ट डेवलप हुआ इससे यहाँ पे नेगेटिव प्रेशर डेवलप हुआ उसकी वजह से क्या हुआ एक तो स्मेल विल नॉट फ्लो इनटू योर ड्राइंग एरिया ऑफ द कॉमन स्पेसेस दूसरा क्या हुआ दिस एरिया विल स्टार्ट हैविंग अ नेगेटिव प्रेशर क्योंकि यहाँ से सेकेंड शुरू हो जाएगा थ्रू बिलो द डोर्स एंड एवरीथिंग अब यहाँ नेगेटिव प्रेशर स्टार्ट हुआ तो क्या हुआ दिस क्रॉस वेंटिलेशन स्टार्ट है थ्रू दिस डोर्स एंड विंडोज विच आर गिवन सो दिस स्मॉल डिजाइन इशूज चेंजेस कैन एक्चुअली हेल्प यू अलॉट Uh, this is example from RWA. What they can do? RWA as an informed RWA can do. Ah, uh, its interesting part. Yeah, our generally when you take a two or three BHK flat in a medium scale uh, uh, development, the generally monthly maintenance bill is five k to six k, eight k. Yes, uh, since last two years they have reduced it to three k to five k, and they have a target. In our RWA target, right? That in 2030, that this should be zero to one k per flat. Interestingly, so what they have done is what they have received. Just a comparison. उनको डेवलपर ने क्या किया था सोलर हॉट वाटर लगा के दिया था सोलर पीवी उन्होंने अपने पैसे से लगाया है एंड दिस इज बेसिकली रनिंग ऑल देयर सेंट्रल स्पेसेस योर कॉमन लाइट इज एवरीथिंग आई हैव नेवर सीन अगेन आई विल रिट्रीट आई हैव विजिटेड मोर देन 700 टू 800 साइट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया आई हैव नेवर सीन सच अ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन डन बाय एनी लेट अलोन ड्यूरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन और ड्यूरिंग स्टेज दिस इज एन आरडब्ल्यू मेंटेनिंग दैट स्टेज ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन क्या करते हैं हर महीने का एक लिस्ट निकलता है हर बिल्डिंग के नीचे एंट्री लाइव पे लगता है उसमें दो लिस्टिंग निकलती है एक फ्लैट वाइज एनर्जी कंजम्पन एक फ्लैट वाइज वाटर कंजम्पन सॉरी एंड हाईलाइट विद ग्रीन एंड विद रेड के कौन ने ज्यादा कंज्यूम किया किसने कम कंज्यूम किया सो दैट एज ए यूजर आई फील ऑफवर्ड एंड मेक श्योर दैट आई डू नॉट कंज्यूम नेक्स्ट टाइम मच नेक्स्ट मंथ लेसर सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट सोसाइटी विच आई हैव सीन दैट फ्रॉम देयर ओन साइड they have integrated rain water collection into their domestic surfaces again ye sara rain water jo surfaces se chhat se collect karte hain usko treat karte hain aur usko reuse kar rahe hain rain water ko khud ye developer ne nahi laga ke diya tha unhe they have changed their flow rates to even 1 microns basically uh, liters per second and then uh, even the waste water from ros in the common areas is being made so that this is not going waste it is treated This is the first society which I have seen from their own side. They have installed individual flat water meters. Flat water meters, I repeat, which is again a challenge when we are designing in in our current duct designing which we do. Last is Royal Conti. You can do this in the YouTube video which Apiksha has shared. It has many details. Uh, interesting thing, some of these which you see is they have uh, let go of the cement plaster. they have used the old pre old usage of lime plaster so everything inside is lime plaster interesting thing about lime it's cooler material usko aapko thanda rakhta hai aapko dusra aapko bar bar paint nahi karna padta har 4 saal ya 5 saal baad it's a white uh, lime basically which are using so my paint and the vocs are reduced at all together my paint ka kharcha reduce ho gaya har saal ka abhi to ab har saal karte hain pehle to fir bhi 5 saal mein hota tha uh, Uh, so no uh, line has used be uh, used for a plaster again this is one project which has used the solve by technology again as a developer so if a developer is using i am sure you should go and opt to look at this technology because developer bina soche samjhe use nahi karega if they go for penny less of what they are investing the recharging lots of rain water and reusing it uh, one of the interesting thing about this campus is they have around 247 flats Uh, repeating myself again after this tomorrow per month energy bill is just 100 rupees or 200 rupees running for last 3 years at least kisi bhi flat mein aaj tak 100 ya 200 rupees se zyada ka bijli ka bill nahi aaya everything in the flat is run on renewable energy interesting systems they have installed you can see it in the videos and on that first slide uh, remember this red line this is very important anything is possible एक टू बी एच के या थ्री बी एच के का अगर बिजली का सौ या दो सौ रुपया आता है इट्स वर्थ गोइंग एंड विजिटिंग आई एम श्योर फॉर इट एंड स्पेशली इन अ डेवलप ऑफ फ्लैट सो आई एम लिविंग ऑन लिविंग फ्लोर ऑन दिस थॉट दैट्स माई कॉन्टैक्ट डिटेल्स एंड द वेबसाइट एंड द ईमेल आई डीज एंड ऑल द सोशल मीडिया कॉन्टेक्ट 
you are most welcome to connect with us and hope the session was helpful i tried it a lot but i am still over time <laughs> but uh, i am open to questions anybody any questions if you have uh, you are open to open your <clears throat> uh, camera and mic and if you to ask there are lots of things which i have not discussed so i am hoping to see you all again in the training program to discuss much more in detail everything these are this is just a glimpse of uh, because two hours is very less to talk about sustainability as a whole uh, you need almost at least one or two days to or three days at least to talk about sustainability we are just touch base on very small things of energy and thermal comfort and water uh, and that's what grea does it is everything as a whole it evaluates sustainability as a whole everything in your building is important as an architect we have to make sure that everything we make is important yeah you can uh, the tv can share the slides not a problem uh, we are all images anyways uh, there's no text without me speaking you can uh, i'm sure there's something on each slide i'll share the images but uh, <laughs> without me in this uh, slide i'm not sure it will be very helpful but uh, we'll be have to we'll be okay in sharing the slides too and uh, um, these are some images which are the non compliant images i'll remove from the presentation because of the non disclosure agreement with the project teams but compliant ones the good examples i'll leave for you to make yourself own explanatory examples of these slides probably and once we meet again we'll have these discussion kaise hai mai as of course slides say, probably thanks achana over to you thank you akash deep it was a wonderful trailer if i may say right so akash deep has actually taken you through a trailer so i'm sure everybody is curious about the film as he said right so we'll be more than happy to help you join the training programs when the iia griha training programs are launched eventually before the end of the session we will be making you aware of the next schedule as and when the training programs are likely to happen with griha uh, meanwhile i'm handing over the floor back to uh, griha uh, apeksha patel who is a senior project officer will take over from here and she will introduce our three speakers who are presenting their own projects today apeksha thank you ma'am uh, i hope i'm audible yes apeksha audible yes yes apeksha you are audible uh, thank you so much a very good good afternoon everybody uh, i'm apeksha patel uh, from graha council and uh, as we move ahead with this awareness program we would now like to showcase a few case studies of the griha rated or registered projects So with this, I would now like to welcome Mr. Tejas Chavan, uh, who is managing director at Green Spaces, uh, to present a case study on uh, Grape County project, which is which is a five-star rated uh, Swagriya project. So, uh, Mr. Tejas Chavan, uh, you can please uh, uh, take uh, from here. Thank you. Hello. Uh. Yes, your your audible. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Tejas Chavan. Uh, I'm from Nasik. Uh, we have a company called Green Spaces, and under Green Spaces, we have a couple of projects. So the one project which uh, I'm presenting today is a hospitality project, uh, which is called Grape County. So Grape County is a eco resort and a biodiversity park. and uh, uh and i would like to present it to you uh, in a while but uh, uh, before that so speaking as i'm not a technical person not architect i'm not uh, 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 in engineering but i would like to present this presentation uh, considering as a developer and also uh, for people who want to develop something like this and uh, considering green building So I would this will be less technical and more of a uh, picture presentation and with some uh, business uh, figures in mind. So I just start off with it. Just give me a sec. Is my screen uh, seen? Picture. uh no we we cannot see your screen uh 
Oh uh, yeah, now we can. Okay. So, uh, so Grave County is spread across totally around hundred acres. And then we have an eco resort out there. And uh, so, this is uh, the few slides I would like to show. So, in the red, the the, the the structure which is in the red color is the uh, the restaurant, and the green uh, roof is the the resort. And then we have some water body which we have done out there, which is 100 percent rainwater harvesting, and a lot of plantation which we have done in last uh, seven to eight years. So the idea or philosophy which we believe in is Vasudeva Kutumbaka, which is the world is one family, and we like to you know, live and uh, uh, you know, exist with together with the animals, with the, the flora and fauna. The four objectives uh, which we had considered uh, while doing this vegan eco job is one is like minimizing the uh, carbon footprint. Second is uh, using uh, waste resources as much as possible. Then uh, uh, maximizing the use of recycled materials and minimum the damage to the nature. And so uh, for all this thing, so we had obviously we had uh, uh, we had consultants and uh, they were hand holding uh, on the project from last, like, you know, from the uh, beginning of the project. And uh, because of them, we could take this ahead. So the total area of uh, is around two, uh, two, six, uh, 26,000 square meter. And uh, the total, uh, the built up area was around 14,000 square meter. So, so in that, and then in Sorbia, for the Sorbia certification, it was the dining hall, the banquet, the cottages, and the villas were considered as a part of uh, certification. So approximately around 40 to 50 percent of the resort is powered by uh, solar panels. Uh, very interestingly, what we have done, we have the solar panels which are which are uh, uh, which are uh, dual axis hybrid panels which which move with the direction of the sun. So as the sun moves, the, the solar panels move. Uh, and then generates more energy. So this is one of its kind, which I just used second or third, uh, implementing this thing in Maharashtra. So, so we have totally around 60 kV power generation, so which is around 190 units per day. So in this, if you see in a business term, so we save approximately around 3,000 rupees per day, which comes up comes up to around 11, 12 lakh rupees annually. Because uh, being in hospitality, in, in every day you need electricity. So that is one thing which we save a lot. And due to the solar panels and uh, solar panels, we have uh, break even the whole project in, and that leaves the electrical project in, in just three and three and a half years. Secondly, the most important and very interesting what we have done is the root zone system. So uh, in the root zone system, so because uh, hospitality industry, indeed, every day there's a lot of water consumption by gas, or by room, by the restaurant, by the kitchen and being in the outskirts of the city uh, we had limitations of or we have uh, we had limited resources of water so because of the root zone uh, you can see in the image there are, there are three different stages and layers uh, where we have uh, uh, we have given a gravity based root zone system the water consumption every day for the resort is around uh, 3000 liter per day 30,000 liter per day and we we ensure that we uh, recycle or treat 100% of the water. So in, in monetary terms, the water expense usually is around you know, 2 lakh rupees a year. So that's what we save for and we reuse obviously for the landscape work. So approximately we save around 7 to 7 to 8 lakh rupees uh, uh, a year uh, in sense of electricity and water consumption. So again, this was like, you know, because, because doing a project, you like being a developer, we always uh, calculate how much we're going to save, how much we're going to, you know, that, that's the figures always going to be very important. So just because uh, I, I would love to give that, you know, doing a green building or doing some green practices, it obviously uh, benefits you monetarily uh, in within just time of two to three years. So this is what the images of the road zone system. Where on the left side is what it was earlier, on the right side is uh, what you see, uh, you know, what is right now. Uh, secondly, uh, then you know, then we have vermicompost, compost, whatever, uh, whatever waste, whatever waste has been generated uh, in the area, 
uh, the green wares, uh, we compost it by vermi compost and we use it as a manure for the landscaping. These are some eco practices which we follow in the uh, in, in the premises, which are like which are very which are like uh, we don't use any chemical fertilizers for landscape or any uh, or anywhere in the property. We do organic farming out there. Uh, uh, we make the zone is completely plastic free zone, so we try to use minimum plastic in the area, and uh, and whatever the given for the guests in the room and everywhere we use the glass bottles for 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 providing water then we have regular training programs for the for the team about considering the environmental aspects of the whole region then uh, then you know we usually use ro water and not uh, bottled water as i mentioned earlier so there are a few practices obviously in the construction if you ask it's been the same like what the earlier presentation had considered it is 100 percent use fly ash bricks for that we use all mostly local material local stone uh, without considering uh, <coughs> without getting uh, materials from far away and uh, using as much as local material possible. Then this is uh, this is what this is the rainwater harvesting which we had done. Like uh, this was done in, uh, from four five years back, and now we store almost around the uh, fourteen crore liter of water every year in this dam, and it has become a nice ecosystem where we have a lot of migratory birds coming in the property, and then we have. Uh, we do fishing out here, boating, swimming. So this has been this this was a barren land just five years back, and now because of the water body, we have uh, you know, the vegetation has increased, and obviously the bird bird life and everything is bird count has increased a lot. So initiative which we have obviously taken, we have, we have almost we have transplanted all the trees which were uh, earlier there and you know were part of. Uh, uh, construction, so we have 100% uh, transplanted the trees. Uh, till date, we have planted more than uh, uh, for 58,000 trees. 95% trees are native trees, indigenous local trees of uh, the region, and uh, with 100% survival rate, so not a single mortality uh, of any of the trees. Uh, and flora and fauna, like we have around 48 different types of birds which are in the property. Different types of butterflies and obviously numerous number of insects and uh, other reptiles are there. So this is why it's one of the figures which why I'm mentioning is it was a completely abandoned land just seven to eight years back, and now this is what we uh, see because of all these practices we have adopted. There is some just some images across what you know the nature around it. We do have. Of, uh, lepers in the not in the property, but obviously they uh, keep coming uh, because we are next to the forest land. This is just a uh, uh, aerial image which is which you can see. This 2012 the land what you see is the mark is a completely barren land with just hardly any trees in the property. And in just uh, span of seven to eight years, what you see is you know the structure also, and plus obviously the lot of green uh, footprint, lot of vegetation around. The region. Same photo of the where, where there was not a single drop of water, and then you see there is a water body. <laughs> there are two water bodies in the property, and obviously also the green patch. This is uh, life. Uh, this in the span of seven years. Obviously, you could. I believe that you know we can. In this time of five to six years, we can do a lot of uh, work and a lot of green work and a lot of change in the environment. This is some of more images. So there was a forest land next to us, but you know, initially there used to be a lot of cutting uh, and pruning of the trees by the tribal farmers, by the tribal people. So we stopped and educated them, and we got involved them in the project of the of the resort, and you know, and then we and they have stopped cutting the trees. In just seven to eight years, the trees were again <coughs> back in their shape, and we could see a nicely dense forest uh, out there. Yeah, that's all. Any questions or anything? You can address and discuss. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chavan, for a very interesting case study. And the effort made by the Green Spaces team is really commendable. Uh, with this, I would really uh, encourage the participants to ask any questions if they have.
this so this so this project is in nasik in maharashtra uh, it's just around 15 uh, 15 kilometers from the city and from bombay if you say it's around 3 uh, and 1/2 hour drive from mumbai uh so we also have a, a comment uh, saying the best part is the session uh, session was sorry so the i guess how much area was needed for the creating a rooms of process so so it was because we had a sloping land so we could uh, you know use the slope to create a root zone uh, processing unit which hardly took around uh, uh, less than 10000 square feet it was less than 10000 square feet and uh, and so the the best part of the room zone is you know there is no electrical uh, need there is no electricity there is no mechanical uh, need and there is no chemical or no manpower needed for you know for this that are there any more questions uh, does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask any question uh so uh, they just if you don't mind i would like to ask you a question like how was uh, your journey in through this rating system or uh, why did you choose to go for a certification in the first place so so uh, so rating really, yeah so idea was to obviously we had intended to do a green building i know and uh, spread the message about uh, how do we do the green building so initially the first green building which we did was the rating system was our corporate office called green spaces that is four star my <clears throat> four star rating and then grape county so the process was uh, pretty smooth and uh, and uh, the And obviously, the, the team was very supportive. Apex and other team was very supportive of hand holding us and educating us because we were not we were very new to this uh, whole process. So the uh, the process was very smooth and very hand. They were hand holding us uh, in the entire journey. And obviously, we learned a lot uh, with with everything. And obviously, it is benefiting us a lot in the long term. And uh, and we obviously, there's a company we have decided that every next whatever next building we do, it hundred percent going to be a certified and green building where we you know try to follow all the norms possible thank you thank you so much for answering that uh, are there any further questions uh there is i'm not sure if this question was answered uh, what is the daily waste water volume okay so uh, waste water so as, as, as i mentioned so there is around 30000 liters in the water we uh, which is the grey water which which has been consumed in the uh, by the restaurant or by the room guests and uh, 100% of the water is been treated so and then treated and then again used for uh, plantation so there is uh, as such there is no uh, wastage of water anywhere uh, hardly i think around 100 200 liters must be a wastage of water but uh, there's it's very minimal like you know there is hardly any water we waste in the property all right i think uh, since we do not see any more questions i again like to thank you and uh, the green spaces team uh, for presenting uh, this case study to uh, iim members yeah. and thank we look so. forward to uh, you know working more with you thank you so thank much you. absolutely thank you so much thank you with this now i would like to uh, introduce our next uh, case study which is of the project iit uh, bhalai and uh, i would like to invite ms bk sanjaya who is partner at krc india to present the case study pratiksha karu shakta kiwa nantar pudha prayatna karu shakta
हाँ मामा हेलो हेलो आफ्टरनून एवरीवन आर यू एबल टू हियर मी यस मैम यू आर ऑडिबल ओके आर यू आल्सो एबल टू सी द स्क्रीन यस यस ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच ग्रह एंड आई नॉट चैप्टर for giving this opportunity to share the philosophy of the firm as well as this particular project which is ongoing this project started off in 2018 it was a competition which was uh, awarded so we we are doing the master planning and the academic buildings for the campus located at chatisgarh on the top left you can see that there is a river which is flowing which is the shivnath river and the land was in three parcels the large chunk of land which you can see here which is called the site 1 and then we had another piece of land which was near the river which is the site 2 and there was one in naya raipur so in the master planning what we looked at was the possibility of accommodating the academic and the hostels in site 1 because they needed to be in the proximity and site 2 was then looked at for a residential complex and site 3 which was at naya raipur as a outreach campus so that is broadly what we looked at as a kind of division of the land parcels that were available post the competition it was also reorganized and the site 1 also accommodated some residential accommodation for the staff as well the site is 344 acres the large site which is site 1 this is really the context where it sits you know a lot of rice mills which are around and lot of brick kilns this is the flora and the fauna which is in the site itself some of these imagery is really from the site when we visited it around march around the same time in 2018 these are also some of the built forms and the kind of architecture that exists currently around the site a lot of mud which is used clay tiles this is a view of the existing water feature which was there what was being used was a lot of farm land was kind of scooped out from the site and this was being used as a fish pond and the pc culture department had been using it over a period of time but it also meant along the buns we have these full grown trees that you can see all around so an analysis of the site which is the larger piece of site that i'm looking at we only had one point of entrance which you can see my cursor if you see my cursor moving the main entrance was on the northwest due west almost that was the point of entry that we had which was the road from bilai there was also an auxiliary entrance which is existing which cut through the campus dividing it into one third and two thirds almost so this dotted line that you see was an existing road then there were cluster of trees what you see as green were cluster of trees which existed on the site there were water bodies some that we've marked as visual resource which was just adjoining our site but we looked at the possibility of using them as visual resources something which was also part of our own site but which was to the periphery a large water body which was to the left hand side of the existing road which had a very good quality about the visual quality as well also the you know the fauna around that place was like very good then the fish ponds that we are looking at as a larger chunk towards the north uh, an ht line reservation which went through so when you really look at the land though the land was about 344 acres the available land for use after all these constraints were really only about 1/3 then there was a large oxidation pond on to the southwest which was in disuse this was being used by the bilai steel plant earlier and this is now in disuse so this is 
just a larger blow up of the fish ponds and the way the bunts were created. So these bunts were really raised mounds, but then there were clusters of trees which were existing on natural land, which we used as a point of start. Then looking at the slope, diagonally across from the southwest to the northeast, we had about 12 meter drop across the site. And there was a nala which was on the northeast corner of the site. And that went through and connected onto the Shivnath River further down. So equipped with all of this information and you know the wind direction and the kind of climate that it is, et cetera, what we looked at was about creating a campus which was not just functional, but we wanted to have the way it was developed to kind of enhance the natural features, the vegetation and integrating the local craft of the region, which many of us are familiar, is very, very rich in the local craft. The tribal craft was very good. So we wanted to integrate all of this and create a campus where the young minds, the students who come in, kind of grow with it and start appreciating the nature that is around. The visual that you see the bottom left hand is actually a drawing which was in one of the houses when we visited the site. This was on their wall. And on the right hand side, of course, is the art which is by the famous uh, artist from that region. The project itself is built up area of 3,21,475 square meters in phase one. It was obviously looked at in three phases. So we are looking at the first phase and stage one of the first phase is what we are looking at. Starting with 1,200 undergraduate students to begin with and eventually moving up to 12,000 students. That is really the campus planning that one is looking at and also faculty student ratio is one in 10, the staff student ratio is one in 1.1. So that was the kind of uh, division we looked at and the housing was accordingly laid out. So the greatest challenge was really to integrate the natural features on the site and create the campus. Now the planning parameters, I think many of us are familiar. You look at the climate, you look at the topography, you look at the functional requirements that the client gives you. You also add on your basic philosophy onto it. Look at the technology which is available and the material choice, which to us was really using the local materials. And then finally, the aspirations of the client and everyone who's involved in it. So we set out to, to create a holistic environment to preserve the existing features, to create visible and invisible systems of the building framework, to create really a walkable and a pedestrian friendly campus using indigenous plants and reducing water intense landscape. So these were all certain parameters that we set for ourselves while we started to design. And we went on and create spaces which were outside of the classrooms as well. So it kind of gives you a lot of points where you are in association with nature and you're able to have uh, learning experiences outside of the classroom. These were the various iterations we looked at, looking at the zoning, looking at the various combinations of what the piece of land might offer. Not going to dwell too much into it. Finally, what we also looked at was what is from the center point where I'd indicated the fish ponds and the row of trees, etc., which existed. We kind of looked at that as a very sacred center of the campus. We decided to preserve those trees, have our buildings around the water bodies which existed there because it was a way of actually respecting what was there. And then we looked at what was the distance to the farthest point. So you can see that it is roughly about a five minute walking distance to 
the immediate vicinity and for the farthest end of the Southwest, it was a 10 minute. Equipped with these information, we looked at a zoning, the entry point, which was again, like I mentioned, for reasons of safety, security, et cetera. It's like one main entry point, but we also have an alternate entry point, which is to the north, um, to the southeast corner. Then we had, uh, what I'd forgotten to mention was there were two irrigation canals, what you see as a blue dotted line. These were also running through the campus and these were, these are active irrigation canals. And as you all know, we cannot really touch them and these have to be honored. So we looked at a situation where limiting the pedestrian, um, limiting the vehicular movement, we looked at a sweep of a road, which we choose to call the Crescent Road across. So that's like, you know, strings across all the way from the Northwest to the Northeast. So it kind of runs through from one end to the other. There is a radial road, which we have, which is the existing one from the existing road. So that we decided to retain onto the right of which there is a mandatory green, which, I mean, there were a lot of trees. So we decided to retain that green and call that the mandatory green, which will not then be touched for any kind of development. Housing was located across one of the nalas. Uh, the irrigation canals. So that became like one end of the site. The hostel was located in close proximity across the crescent. So on the one side of the crescent, you had the academic and the other side you had the hostels. The job was given over three to three architects. So we did the master plan and the academic complex, which is shown in the light red color. The yellow was being is being done by Ada Shila and the that's the hostels, I mean, and the housing is being done by Akshay Jain and Associates. So there were certain stipulations that we came up with as master plan designers. And within those norms, all three of us kind of worked our details together. And we came up with designs which are inherently green. The idea is really about following practices which don't just impact the nature in the immediate you know, couple of years that the construction happens, but makes a huge impact for the whole region over a period of time. So what you see here as a red circle is the academic core. And on the right-hand side, which is immediately across is what is being done as Hall of Residences. Next to the mandatory green, we had created the sports fields, which is then common to both the students as well as the people from the residential area. This is a detail of the landscape that we looked at. So again, when you look at the central core, this is what we retained as the existing trees, some of the water body. So in the local language, it is what is called the pentana, the sacred grove. So we decided to kind of have our building strung across the sacred grove and that central space becomes a seat of learning in the outdoor and nature is of course the, you know, the greatest teacher for all, for all of us. So some of the baselines that we looked at when we started was basic self-sufficiency in energy requirement and water requirement and organic waste. So in order to kind of achieve all of this, um, we decided to have a multi-layered approach, respect the topography and preserve the site with all its features, integration of passive design features in the master plan as well as in the individual building design, conservation of energy by use of advanced efficient material and mechanical systems and integration of innovation methodology and generate renewable energy. In the landscape, we also looked at preserving, of course, the water bodies, but significant vegetation and trees which were existing, which could be preserved, were kind of kept. 
The drainage pattern as per the existing gradient of the site was maintained. Indigenous species have been proposed in order to minimize the water requirement and high maintenance areas like lawns, etc., was only limited to a very small po portion near the academic area. And buffer green screen planting was provided along the boundary because along the boundary, we have provided a vehicular road, which also gives security. And we've also found with our past experiences that it's very important to secure your land on a large campus. And we've optimized the paved areas so that we are able to reduce the heat island effect. These are some of the views that was developed, like what we mentioned. This is the entry point on the bottom left hand. The existing water body was on the right. So we picked up an axis, which connected through onto the administration block, which then led on onto the academic area. It's a view of it. Then we also looked at the central area, which I was mentioning about the sacred space. We have a corridor which links up all the buildings across. There were 12 departments which we were supposed to accommodate, four of which are coming now in phase one, stage one. What you can see on the left hand side, which is mentioned as engineering department, on the right hand side is the science. Then you have the Starship building, which is the library. Then we have the lecture hall complex, instrumentation facility, which is a common facility, which will be used by all the departments and the prototyping facility. So all of these got strung across around a linked cor corridor, which was covered at two levels. So if you look at a section through that, the building is on the left-hand side. And on the right, you see this corridor, which is covered in the roof, but open from the sides, which is also linking with the features within. So there are some trees which are existing, water body, and the services kind of got consolidated along this corridor. We actually wanted to have a service tunnel under this and have all the services accessible, but various reasons, we could not really kind of take that through, but we did use the height of the corridor, which was available to run the LV services as well as the water and fire. And on the ground, we have the HVAC and the electrical, which is running alongside the corridor. So it's easy and you're not digging all over the place. So these were predetermined routes that we kind of fixed. The same is the case, which is along the roads, a typical cross section through a road we have a double carriageway or a single carriageway, but the services are kind of predetermined on both sides, the row of trees, the cycle paths, the pedestrian paths, all of this is kind of planned and built in so that at any given point of time, the services are accessible and they run along the main spine itself. This is a view of the corridor that I mentioned, the linking corridor. So the space for services you see, which is on the top, and the local craft, we plan to kind of integrate into the panels at certain distances, intervals, which also give a variety and expose the students who come in from all over the country to the specificity of that reg region. And we also decided it was like a conscious effort to use steel for this corridor, again, as, a, as achieving a contextual design aesthetic. All of us associate Belai with the steel plant. So it was like a memory recall that we wanted to kind of bring back onto the campus itself. These are some of the views that, you know, so you have the departments overarching over the corridors, giving a variety of, you know, variation to the space. That's a view. So quickly running through, um, you know, what we had put in as, some of the things was the buildings were largely looked at with favorable orientation. The width of the build buildings were kept to a minimal in order to be able to get daylight into majority of the areas where we could not really do that or it was like multi-levels. We looked at skylights which kind of penetrated through so you could get 
light into the corridors with the covered walkways, like I mentioned, along the, um, along the inner side. The interaction spaces along the corridor also were created so you could have pause points, places where people could interact. And the existing fish ponds were maintained. And we also used a hierarchy of <coughs> the water bodies. So if you look at a detail of each of these clusters, it's about optimizing on the paving, optimizing on the window wall ratio, looking at the external shading devices where uh, you know, we could not really avoid openings onto the west side because you also had the aspect of a visual connect, which you needed to maintain. Then retaining the land profile using um, photovoltaic panels wherever possible. Also, we looked at certain uh, the Kotia typology, which was used in the plant. So we also looked at shading devices over the courtyard. The roofs are covered over with China mosaic so that there is heat reflection and reduction in heat gain into, into the areas. A lot of the areas are a mix of air conditioned and non air conditioned spaces. So we also have cavity walls, which we've looked at so that there is possibility of heat gain cut down. So generally optimization of the building envelope is what we looked at. This is a typical department that you can see what we mentioned about reduction in the depth so that there was light penetration from both sides, buildings which kind of faced onto each other. So there is an interaction, intra-department interaction which happens for the students. There's a larger interaction court. There's a variation of space provision for future expansion so that the present buildings which get built do not get disturbed in the future and they kind of get added on and look complete at each of the stages. We also provided, um, you know, um, if you look at this along the corridor at roughly about 70 meter distance, we had vertical connects. So this corridor, which we looked at provided access for all across two levels. So it wasn't that the uh, handicapped access or universal accessibility was only at one level. It was actually provided at two levels because we interspersed these corridors with ramps. So the student activity, the larger student activity where classrooms, etc., are located are limited to the ground in the first floor so that there is a quick dissipation of student, uh, you know, at the end of the class, etc. So they're not really kind of crammed into the staircases and lifts. It's only at the upper floors that you're looking at where so typically we looked at also a graded skyline in the front we looked at four floors which then overlooked onto the larger green and then it moved up to the six and the future expansion we're looking at eight so there was also a variation that was given also we looked at services so what you see on the outer face because these all um, departments with a lot of services in it we looked at a certain rhythm in the structural system, which gave us the possibility for shafts where the services could run without really interfering with the functioning of the spaces internally. And these shafts also had access from outside. So maintenance was an easy uh, possibility. Also, we looked at modularity of the whole structure. So as you can see, there is a certain module which gets repeated. LNT are the construction contractors for the job. And what we are also looking on a large scale is looking at pre-casting because our uh, setup like LNT is able to actually do that. So in the initial planning processes, because of uh, you know certain limitations of costing and budgeting, et cetera, you're not able to do that and build it in. But at the moment, working with the contractors and working with the CPWD who are the executing agency, we are able to look at many ways of precasting, which also make the whole construction process very, very friendly at the site. These are just some of the views. This is a cluster of lecture hall complex. Again, I'm kind of showing these plans, 
just so that there is a certain modularity which is used. And also there is a variety that is provided. The central court you see, the classrooms are over two levels. So when all the students come in, that is a shaded court that, that you have. This is the, lecture, uh, the library, which is in the, the center of the thing. And you have the tower, the observatory tower, which we looked at as a visual marker for the whole campus. So what you see here is really what we looked at as one anchor for the whole campus master plan. This is the view through it, and it's overlooking a very shallow reflecting pool. So while all the other water bodies are looked at as natural, this is only one which we looked at as a very, um, you know, a reflecting kind of a pool. This is uh, the hall of residence. This again, you see that it's a cluster uh, courtyard type that uh, typology that one is used. So Adarshila has also used the similar philosophy of looking at utilities, which are efficient, uh, you know, whether it's electrical or plumbing fixtures, all of that is kind of built in. The construction technology that is used is also efficient. And in the planning parameters also, it's similar features which have been used. The same is the case with the housing. What you see is the clubhouse in the center, which is on the water body and which also is like a balancing pond, which is used for the rainwater collection. And you see the high rise residential towers. A quick look at what we looked at as a zero runoff uh, for the rainwater. We looked at the hierarchy, hierarchy of water bodies. So using the highest point, which is at the Southeast, there is water collection immediately next to the residential area, the view that I just showed now. It moves on, the overflow of that moves on onto the next water body, which was an existing feature. Then it moves further down towards the academic area. There is existing water body and a new one which was created. So using the hierarchy of water bodies, we are trying to kind of contain all the water which comes on onto this campus. And finally, the largest collection pond is what is created under the HT line. You know that HT line, we are not able to build anything, do anything. So what we're looking at is really using that for growing vegetables, et cetera, as well as using it as a large reserve for the water body. And it also creates a certain microclimate and it will also better the whole flora fauna of the region. And finally, only if there is a deluge, then you will have the overflow coming onto the Nala and going further onto the river. At the moment, the past records that we've calculated based on, there is a zero water runoff on the campus. Regarding the services, we again used the slope that was available on the site. So looking at the highest point, working by gravity, coming down to the lowest point where we located the STP. These are modular STPs which we are looking at, MBBR technology, and the gray water is then collected in the storage, which is happening at the lowest point, which is used for both flushing as well as um, horticulture. The water supply similarly is being used, located again at the highest point, relying on gravity and collecting on onto two other points in the campus, and then the usage is uh, determined. The air conditioning, it's only the uh, departments, the academic buildings which are air conditioned, and even in the academic buildings, it's only some of them which are air conditioned. So we located the central plant closer to the academic area, so the run from there would be limited, but we use the diversity during the night hours, and that tap off is provided to the hostels. So the hostels would have the air conditioning available to them at night. Ma'am, I'm very sorry to interrupt. We are just uh, running short of time. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm almost done. So this yeah. is again the electrical um, system that we have, which is again limited to along the Crescent Road. And finally, a point tally, we've applied for uh, a Griha rating. And what we are looking at is targeting to get a five-star uh, Graha rating. We've applied for it. The workers on site, a lot of the stuff, which is also as per the Graha norms is being followed. 
And that is the final tally that we are looking at and we are awaiting the report from Graha for the final. And in 2020, the project received the Graha Exemplary Award for Passive Design Features, Energy Management and Water Management. And all this would not be possible without a larger teamwork. So these are the team of consultants that have worked with us. Of course, the Institute has been a great support because under the steering leadership of the director, a lot of things are possible. And that is where a whole team like this really comes together and make things work for creating a certain project that stays there, impacting many more lives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, this was a very technical presentation. I'm sure all architects, uh, you know, uh, were very happy to uh, look into the features and what all you have done in this project. So if there are any questions quickly, uh, can you please uh, have them? Uh, maybe uh, you can unmute yourselves or put it in the chat box. I guess, you know, I mean, if there are any questions, you could also kind of post it and we could respond to it later. But uh, I mean, the, the baseline really is about having a dialogue, a continued dialogue and looking at, you know, the way things work in a particular. So they have to be context specific and looking at situations and making uh, decisions. <laughs> Uh, Mom, your screen is visible. Hello. Uh, we're not able to hear you. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, now you are. Thank you. Is the screen visible? Yeah, yeah, screen is also visible. Yeah. I'm also joined uh, uh, by, with my son, uh, <laughs> so, who is also a Gitni evaluator and uh, we are going to talk about this uh, CIC building, uh, which is on Baba Gangnath Mar in uh, New Delhi, old JNU campus. So this is the front view of uh, uh, this building. So basically it was in Delhi and uh, it was a government building. So they wanted something of uh, the Luchin style. And uh, this building, it, the site of the plot is 465 square feet. A built up area is 9770 square meters. It's an office building and energy consumption reduction is about 60.3% reduction, reduction in energy consumption compared to our benchmark. Uh, and EPI, the energy performance index is 55.5 kWh per meter square per year. Uh, renewable energy, which we have used is rated capacity of solar PV installed is 35 kWp and the year of completion. 2017. So uh, we are the architects, uh, structural consultants, Dr. I.C. Sial and vetting agency IIT Rurki and executing agency uh, NBCC and uh, Mr. Behel was there. Yeah. So this is the exterior of the building because it was in Delhi and the government building. So we wanted to use uh, similarity to Luchin's Delhi. Next. And uh, we've also used uh, jalis, uh, jalis and uh, the, the stone. So this is the plot and uh, the, my first visit to the site revealed that the front road, which was at Baba Gangnath Mark, and the back road, 
uh, it was uh, almost 1.5 meters higher than the back wall. So I did not change the topography of the site and uh, we made a site responsive design. Uh, so what we did was we entered from here and slowly and gradually we uh, uh, descended down and our first basement was almost like the ground floor. And then we came up like this and we this is how we come out, uh, right? And all the services were also planned accordingly. And uh, <clears throat> So this was site responsive designing and the topsoil was also preserved. Uh, we tried to uh, preserve the, uh, the trees possible as, as much as possible and solar passive design strategies were adopted in the building. Uh, well, I think we'll go to the next. This is the narrow openings which we have used next. Yeah. So coming on to the basic planning, uh, the function of this building was uh, Central Information Commission, which is the headquarters of RTI. And uh, here we are going to have, uh, we, we have uh, 10 information commissioners with their respective uh, 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 hearing rooms or they call the courtrooms. And uh, one was for Central Information Commissioner. Now, uh, there was a basic thing that, uh, you know, the commissioners, my clients told me that uh, anyone who comes here is coming with a already harassed mind. So at the, mo at the entrance only, he should be given a, a, a good treatment, you know, so that his mind gets relaxed. And they wanted their own entries to be separate. So what I did was I brought the general entry in the front, which opens up into the atrium, whereas the entry for the ICs was from the sides. So all the ICs have their own lifts and their own, uh, you know, they connect to their own uh, chambers. chambers. And on the ground floor, what we have is the entrance. We have a big atrium uh, and a glass lift. And then we have a seminar room, which is of the capacity 150. And we have a, a dining space and also a VIP dining space because PM also comes here quite often. And then we have a, a big uh, record. Uh, record room which uh, with a lot of compactors. And then just at the entrance, we have some security and then we have this waiting space. Um, and here only we have through the IT, we come to know when, uh, you know, the person will come to know when his turn has come and he will enter the building only then. 60 feet high green. And we have a 60 feet high uh, vertical yeah. green wall. And on the first floor, we have, you know, it's like this, that the moment the, the visitor would enter from the staircase or the lifts and uh, he has the facilities and he has uh, uh, the common facilities, but the, you know, uh, the commissioners would enter like this and they enter their chamber directly. Whereas uh, uh, the complainant uh, would enter this way. These are the hearing rooms. These are the hearing rooms. So, um, they have a, a direct access for the information commissioners from a separate lobby. And we have four numbers, you know, these are the similar uh, uh, cubicles, I would say. Uh, and uh, four number information commissioner rooms, there's waiting area for public and uh, staff areas also with the uh, adjoining uh, commissioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, for achieving visual comfort, we have artificial lighting designing as per NBC norms. We have used LED lights. External shading devices have been used with the combination of fins and jollies uh, with high performance double glazed units uh, having a window wall ratio of 60 is to 40. And landscaping is planned with native species and uh, green wall features have been used in the central atrium and all around the building. And energy, uh, uh, yeah. It's uh, on the second floor, again, the same is repeated, like one, two, three, four, uh, four uh, uh, information commissioners along with their uh, uh, hearing rooms and their staff and some waiting area. And on the third floor, uh, we have, this part is for the central information commissioner. And these two are for the uh, information commissioner. So we have 10 information commissioners and one central information commissioners, the, the one who heads all of them. And we also have a, 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 a conference hall along with facilities. Now, as far as water management is concerned, we, uh, there's a reduction of 50% from Griha Bay's case has been demonstrated in the building. 
water use by installing water efficient flush and flow fixtures. We have also used sewer treatment plant, which is provided for 100% wa wastewater treatment on site. And we have used drip and sprinkler irrigation system on the site to achieve water efficiency in landscape. On the fourth floor is basically for administration. And we have uh, uh, the offices for uh, the secretary, the joint secretaries and uh, uh, deputy secretaries. And we also have a big conference hall and other facilities like uh, legal and RTI cell, ladies room, crash, DDO, cash chest and first aid room. Yeah, next. yeah. And this is the basically the section uh, the, the commissioners would enter like this from their uh, respective entries and general public enters from here. Now, rainwater harvesting uh, has been used here uh, from the terrace. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we have used uh, uh, solar passive architecture here. You know, uh, in uh, the hot air moves up and it tries to go out like this. And uh, uh, you know what, we, we've kept some spaces which are open on the sides, which will bring fresh air. And this air, when it gets hot, it goes up and it moves out. Um, and uh, we've used uh, low VLC paints, solar as alternate source of energy and VRV air conditioners. Uh, Central Plaza enables the natural daylight and bringing in saving electricity. So this is the side view of the building uh, from where uh, you know the ICs would enter. Uh, well, this is the central courtyard. So basically, as uh, was my instruction, that a complainant is coming here. So uh, you know uh, when he enters, he's already uh, come with a frustrated mind. So uh, the moment he sees a lot of space. What happens is uh, the, the space, you know, it expands your mind. So once your mind is expanded, so your comfort level, the, your mental comfort level increases. And uh, we have the glass lifts and along the glass lift, we have the vertical green walls, which have uh, staircases or, st uh, you know, st ladder on the side so that for better maintenance. And we have used uh, uh, the plants which give uh, more of oxygen. Uh, like the money plant and the mother in law's tongue and other plants. And this also brings in enough light and, you know, light, uh, fresh air, oxygen, all this uh, fills you up with positive energy and positivity. Next. Yeah. So here we have, uh, we have these modules of 12.5 meters by 16.21 meters. The structure was basically coffer. So we yeah. used a lot of. Yes, you speak. So the structural system was all uh, the big spans of about 12.65 by 16.21. So we used coffers in all the slabs. Thereby, we reduced the uh, dead weight of concrete and the amount of concrete that has to be used. So that was also a green point. And the fourth floor, uh, the uh, DGU, uh, the light through the DGU is uh, through the Jali. So all the secretaries get shaded light. Yeah, and we've used autoclated locks. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we have used a sewage treatment plant, but the site was very uh, small. And normally, uh, STPs are an eyesore. But what we did here was we covered the STP with vertical green walls. And as uh, green is our motto, and this building ranks four star Griha rated. Um, Energy conservation equipments incorporating no next. So STP is what uh, you know. Uh, it has a green door also. Uh, some of the uh, views of the during construction. Yeah, maybe you can see this. So we also have uh, along the periphery there are there were slums uh, uh, in the side. So we have uh, along the complete boundary we have twenty feet high green wall. Yeah, and that camouflaged uh, the view of the slums. So the natural topography of the site was used uh, since ma'am already said that we've made the basement as we raised the building so that the basement acts like a stilt and the retaining wall the rcc work has is minimized now the existing mature trees on the periphery were preserved the topsoil was preserved during construction it was reused for the landscape work later on then uh, solar passive uh, strategies like central courtyard planning and microclimate were used 
uh, we already do a reduction of 50% from uh, greha base case stp for 100% and we use the stp treated water for uh, double plumbing and landscaping and we also had all motor, uh, meters installed for uh, the uh, for the uh, landscape water for the plumbing water for the flushing water and, and then sprinkler system is used in the landscaping then our the lighting design was such that no over designing has been done the dgus had uh, a u value of, of 1.6 so it was quite a good efficient uh, glass then external glazings were shaded and occupancy sensors were there 35 kilowatt solar plant was there ac blocks were there so this is some views of the building and uh, handicap ramps were also there uh, along with tactile flooring tactile flooring was and there rail signages rail signages were there uh, this i've already said uh, camouflage the view of the uh, this is the stp yeah stp and uh, you can see the uh, the waste management also this is the back side of uh, back view of the building so the design concept by creating courtyard you know i created a microclimate so which provides relieving uh, spaces in the whole complex and the uh, and the roof uh, terrace has some gym below the solar uh, solar panels and some terrace gardens for really as relief spaces which also decreases the temperature of the uh, fifth floor by about 4 to 5 degrees So building, uh, blending the design mass with overall landscape architecture, the complex was totally achieved in this uh, play of landscape inside and outside was there. So just going through a walkthrough. So a lot of small water bodies have been used. lot of landscaping lot of water bodies This is the entry for the information commissioners. So wherever we got, even if it was a small patch of land, we created greenery and uh, water bodies to cool the environment. That's the entry to the courtrooms. The conference halls. Library. Seminar room.
Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I would now open the floor for any questions. Um, you can put it in the chat box or ask them by unmuting yourself. Uh, Archana ma'am, do we have any questions? I cannot see anything in the chat box. I would like to ask. Yes, Atisha. Um, uh, yes, ma'am. Tanuja is asking a question. Yeah. I, I just wanted to ask you, Renu, um, yeah. how long has the project been completed? Uh, when was the project? Three and a half years. Take your pardon? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. So, you know, the vertical wall, um, do you need to kind of, uh, is it very uh, uh, maintenance intense? Do you need to keep changing it every season? So, uh, as Actually, I told you, you have it internally as well as externally. So, yeah. Yes, yes, we have. And we've also keep provided a ladder. So, there's a drip, uh, uh, the pipe going and for drip irrigation is there. And in the tender for the green wall only, we had put five years maintenance. So uh, the the guy uh, taking care of the green wall has to establish a nursery nearby or takes uh, take help of a nursery nearby and uh, replace the plants as and when needed. So it was all put for five years, we had put it in the tender. But after that, yes, some maintenance would be needed. But I'm glad to tell you it's being maintained very well. The other question which I also had was you had a roof area, but yeah. from the view, we could see only a small part of it being used for the solar panels. Yeah, one, you know, one so, wing was being used for solar panels. So was there any constraint on why it could not be used across or yeah, a larger water. area could no, be? No, because they had water tanks on one of them. And they want party. Some no, they wanted together. some space for get togethers also. Because some yoga space and they we, wanted. The way we justified the solar panels to the secretaries was that we'll make your gym below the solar panels. So, but it was not possible to justify the. Uh, we wanted to have a larger solar plant, but it was not possible to justify because they wanted some get together area. So, what we did, you know, uh, the solar uh, thing is done over a steel structure. So, beneath that, we were using that space. And of course, you know that uh, uh, water tanks also have taken a lot of space. AC units, water, AC tanks. Units, water tanks. No, my, my question was only because in a place like Delhi, you can do with that additional roof protection. So you can actually use the solar panels itself as a you know, kind of a manner of cutting out the heat. So that, that was my mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. I think uh, because we are running short of time, if there are any more questions, please put it in the Q&A or chat box. But uh, we would now uh, switch to the next session. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am and sir, for uh, <clears throat> joining in and uh, presenting this case study. Uh, with this, I would uh, now uh, take you all to the next session, which is uh, session three where uh, uh, you know i will be briefing a bit about uh, what are the next programs that we are coming up in collaboration with iia and also uh, you know briefing you a bit about what are the memberships and how you can get involved with griha council so i'll be sharing my uh, screen shortly uh, is my screen visible ma'am Yes. 
uh yes so i would like to mention uh, this that uh, iia uh, northern chapter and griha council signed an mou in 2019 and last year because of the pandemic we couldn't do uh, any events but the key features that we had decided uh, on which we are going to come up uh with the programs especially for uh, iia members was uh, the modules are specially curated by griha council for the architects so whatever uh, uh, criteria that we have and the uh, concept behind it everybody every everything has been kept in mind and explained in a way that architects can understand easily secondly as you can see we are conducting this program uh, on a saturday uh griha council of course has a five day working but specially for the architects so that more and more people can join and more and more people can get to know what griha rating system is we have uh, specially uh, we are specially conducting all the programs on saturdays the trainers from griha council are mostly you know we have different kind of uh, different uh, people from different backgrounds they are engineers they are architects i myself am i am uh, a masters in environmental sciences we have environmental engineers but uh, for especially for the iia members because they are architects and it is easy when an architect is explaining to an architect maybe so that is when uh, that is why we have also thought that you know the architects which are uh, who are there from our team would uh, specially come for these programs uh, case studies as you can see it is always better to see the projects what they are doing what what are the new things that are coming up so that that helps you understand how exactly you can implement griha rating in your project and also you can see how others have implemented you can always you know learn from them that is why case studies also is a very big part of uh, these programs uh coming to uh, the detailed training programs we have hands on exercises which are again which help everybody to understand what are the concepts how are the calculations done and uh, there are group sec group exercises there are individual exercises Apeksha, sorry to intervene here yes. a picture yeah. can we move yeah. to the slide because i think your slide has not moved uh i'm explaining it in one slide yeah so that slide is not visible the previous uh, slide is Can you see past events now? No, please. No, no, no. We are only seeing the okay. cover slide. I will. I will uh, share it again. Yeah. Can you see it now? Can you see it now, ma'am? Yes. yes. Yes, we can see it now. Yeah. Yeah. so uh, i have mentioned about the modules the programs which are conducted on saturdays <clears throat> trainers being architects from the council the case studies and the hands on exercises uh, the last uh, but not the least point that i would like to mention is uh, the uh, for architects uh, and members of iia the training programs are conducted at discounted rates so these are the past few events that uh, we have conducted there were two awareness programs and one three day detailed griha training that was conducted as you can see there were group exercises and uh, you know detailed training programs uh, which were being conducted so this was done in uh, 2018 2019 and uh, now that after pa pandemic we have to step into the new normal and which demands that we uh, go ahead with this but in a different way where we you know we are safe and at the same time we don't stop doing what we are doing so the events are now being conducted on virtual platforms uh, until you know we feel and the government also uh, allows us to conduct events in a, a big scale so events are conducted on virtual platforms uh, the presentations or whatever reference materials that will be conduct uh, will be uh, discussed or shown during the training or awareness program will be shared with all the registered and uh, people who have attended the training pro uh, training programs over email now as uh, uh, the detailed training program earlier was conducted uh, on uh, on three saturdays but uh, considering that you know uh, we all are working online and we all are on the systems for day long so we have now reduced it to a uh, half day but for five days so the sessions which were conducted for three long days 
they will they will now be conducted into five half days for the ease of uh, uh, participants also uh, the, there will be a limitation on the participation number because we want to ensure that every person who is attending this uh, training online is attended and their doubts are cleared during these training programs so uh, the number will be limited so i request everybody whoever wants to attend the training keep a lookout and register as soon as possible uh, whenever the registrations are open uh, coming to the next programs that we have uh, so today is 6th of march and we are conducting this first virtual event coming next is uh, one griha awareness program in the month of april which is on 17th then we have a uh, griha detail training program which will be conducted on five saturdays half days from um, for on first 8 15 22nd and 29th of may and in the month of june uh, on 5th june we are looking at having a uh, again uh, an awareness program depending how the situation is going to be it will be either virtual or it will be in person so whatever uh, the update is we will let everybody know accordingly uh, coming to the next slide uh, i would uh, i am really pleased to inform everybody in fact this was on our mind even before the pandemic that we want to reach out to more and more people so uh, just uh, last month on 22nd of february we have launched the griha learning center it is an e learning platform where you can uh, take up the course at your convenience and you can complete it at your convenience there is it's a self paced learning course so you can start the course whenever you want you can end the course whenever you want uh, currently we have launched the e course on griha version 2019 which was which is uh, an updated version of the griha rating uh, subsequently we will be launching the griha certified professional and evaluator examination which will again be conducted online so uh, the griha learning center uh, somewhat looks like this there is uh, there will be a section uh, there are 11 sections and you can see uh, all sections are uh, mentioned here when you click into each section it will show you videos of particular criteria with a detailed presentation of that particular section so the presentations are downloadable and the videos uh, you can watch them so uh when this these programs will be conducted for iia specifically there will be an interactive webinar based session for the iia members so this being an online uh, program there is no uh, speaker uh, involved in this with whom you can directly interact so you can always drop an email to us and get your queries answered but for especially for iia members we are going to host a webinar based query session where you can interact with the expert and get your query solved there and there itself so this is uh, something uh, different that we are doing with uh, iia uh, doing for iia members now coming to next slide which is after doing all these programs apart from that we also do uh, one day programs on swagraha eb and the other rating systems that we have along with student training programs so uh, there are specific modules for all these programs and student training program if there is any request from any institution or any organization uh, they can definitely get in touch with us uh, these programs are something um, which will help you and even if uh, you know you want to get in touch with us apart from these programs you can uh, take our ace membership catalyst membership and panel consultants and associate membership these are the memberships however the first two points which is griha certified professional and griha evaluator that is something you can only uh, until now you could only give after attending the training program so uh, the griha version 2019 module is recommended that you should take it up uh, for clearing the exam or that will help you clear the exam but apart from that also you can appear for the examinations the griha certified professional and evaluator and become a, a qualified um, cpr evaluator with us or there are memberships so i would i will quickly run through the benefits of these memberships and community uh, uh, certified professional and evaluator so after you become a certified uh, professional you can be, be a part of the site visits that griha uh, of the griha registered projects 
you can become a trainer uh, with us you get one point under innovation if you are a team member of a project and you get various discounts of uh, on the events that griha council is conducting uh, evaluator is slightly different like akash mentioned in his project uh, in the process there is called as something called as third party evaluation so evaluators are basically third party evaluators for us so if you are a qualified evaluator you would then be given a part of the project in which you are qualified so there are many categories of evaluators there is architect civil engineer plumbing consultant so in whichever category that you qualify that part of or those criteria from the griha rating will be given to you for evaluation so basically uh, from apart from the other benefits that you get which are similar to cp one part is evaluating the projects and all all these programs and everything uh, there is a certain remuneration which is given from griha council so be it conducting the site visit evaluating the projects or becoming a trainer in everything we value your time so in every uh, thing that you are associated with us there will be a remuneration coming to ace and catalyst membership so ace members is specifically a student membership and an individual membership so any student who would want to get associated with griha there are many benefits that you get out of this i will not get into the details of it because all these details are available on the website catalyst membership is for the institution any institution who would want to get associated with us for a year long or two year long uh, membership can be taken by them through which we can do many programs and events uh, for the students associate membership again is for uh, uh, organizations and panel consultants is for consultants who would want to get associated with griha council uh, for the griha registered projects the detailed registration form and the benefits and the fees everything is available on the website and uh, this is the griha website www.grihaindia.org and uh, we are available on the social media network so you can get in touch with us through linkedin twitter facebook instagram and youtube all the event updates and uh, everything that we are coming up with is available on all the social media uh, network so with this i would like to end the presentation you can uh, get in touch with us um, get in touch with me uh, on my personal email id i'll just mention it in the chat and uh, you can get in touch with us uh, through that so with this i would like to end my presentation and uh, hand it over to archana ma'am thank you thank you so much for being associated with griha and uh, you know diligently uh, you know getting in touch with us and uh, getting these programs um, you know uh getting these programs happen actually because a lot of times it happened that we keep on discussing discussing but nothing comes out of it but with iia this has never been the case everything that we discuss has always materialized so i think that is a very good thing that happens with iia and i would really like to thank you all for that thank you thank you so much apeksha thank you so much apeksha for your warm words and uh, i in northern chapter would like to express his gratitude to griha council for the wonderful and exhaustive presentations and the efforts that are made to get case studies also on board which actually make all these sessions even more interesting i may also like to finish at the end of uh, even these awareness programs uh, certificates are shared and these are unique certificates of the combined griha iinc uh, uh, sort of uh, certification so uh, every one of the participants today also will be receiving a certificate from us okay just give us a few days to organize it uh, in the meanwhile i may invite uh, mr amit pande from vidwan samitri woods once again uh, welcome mr pande once again uh, there are Thank some you. questions yes we uh, some participants have sent us some questions right. which uh, we will up from the iin northern chapter portal and uh, architect rohit will be asking the participants questions so there are a number of questions and one by one i think uh, we will take them up right. uh, even if participants are interested in asking questions right now you may please feel free to type or raise your hand either way uh, in the meantime i think 
uh, architect Sunita Kumari had a question and she was repeatedly raising her hand in the previous session. Okay. If she is still around, is she still there? Sunita Kumari, are you still there? I think she may not be here. Meanwhile, let's take up the questions from the chat box. Uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Roy Chen from Architect Northern. So one of the question that had come up was, uh, is the plywood sustainable? Is ply, um, you know what I mean is, is the plywood environmentally friendly? So, because it comes from our tree? Uh, well, uh, it's a very interesting question. And uh, uh, in, the, in today's world, it's, it's uh, paramount that the plywood that we use uh, is sustainable. Uh, I can say the wig bam ply that uh, we manufacture, yes, the answer is yes, it is sustainable. All wig bam plywood products are sourced from sustainable plantations. As you know, we are based out of Hoshiarpur. Uh, and Hoshiarpur is the hub for, uh, you know, procurement of eucalyptus and poplar, which is the basic raw material for manufacturing apply. And these are all sourced from the plantation. So the sustainability of the plywood is not only determined by the sourcing of the ply, it also depends on the manufacturing process because the manufacturing process has to be such that the wood wastage is minimal. And in our case, uh, if you have noticed during the uh, during my presentation, I had clearly mentioned the, the kind of process that we follow, there the wood wastage is very, very minimal. We can say it's zero. So therefore, uh, we can very well say, yes, big bam ply is sustainable. And also another very important point, we use uh, uh, such mechanism because our ply is E1 compliant. So therefore, the formal dehyde emission from our product is the least. So it confirms to the E1 emission, uh, emission norms and the plywood is sustainable. Uh, Amitji, there's a follow-up question. So do you actually, uh, does an architect, supposing if architect has to uh, consider your product, yeah. does he have to approach you directly or do you work with through dealers? We work through dealers. We have more than 1,000 channel partners across 22 states and union territories. So I, I think in, to, uh, in the current scenario, it is very, very easy to look for a dealer uh, uh, as close as possible and anyone can approach uh, them or can approach us also. So if any member of ours needs a, a kind of a sample of our products and the range you have, so is there a resource where they can go and get it? Yes, yes, they can get it from any of our channel partners or in, in case they want to speak to us directly, they're free to call us directly and we can have this arranged through our emails. All right. Amiji, I'm Sharad Chopra here. Uh, I have uh, Amiji, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Yeah. I uh, I have a question. How can it be checked whether the plywood is calibrated or not? Uh, well, sir, uh, any calibrated plywood to check whether it is calibrated or not, is, uh, there are two things that one needs to do. One is check the surface. A calibrated plywood have absolutely even surface. It will have very smooth surface. The second uh, thing that a person can do is use a vernier caliper across the length and breadth, he can take measurements. The variance will not be beyond 0.15 mm to 0.25 mm. So if the variance is within that range, you can be rest assured that the plywood is calibrated. Okay, thank you. Uh, Amiji, we have another question in the chat box, right. which somebody had asked us. If you can take it over. Yeah, sure. Man. How does your plywood compare with WPC board and termite? 
Well, uh, we have a range of plywood which is uh, termite proof and it uh, absolutely, uh, if I have to compare it with WPC, what happens is uh, in, our, in our case, the plywood, uh, since we calibrated, the force in the plywood is very, very less. Therefore, it is more sustainable. The screw holding capacity is higher because it is poor composed. And therefore, uh, and because the uh, surface is calibrated, it gives a much better finishing. So I would say uh, it is far superior in terms of sustainability or the quality of a product compared to a BWP. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think we have actually uh, been able to compile all the questions. Okay. And um, uh, there was this uh, second part to it, which was talking about termites. Yeah. If you could answer that as well. Pardon me? I, I couldn't get you. Uh, in the chat box, the question has been repeated regarding termites, regarding it being termite proof. Yeah, our, our ply, we have a range uh, which is termite proof. We, it starts from club plus. So that range is completely termite proof. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for uh, your support today. And I'm sure uh, your, particularly your presentation, as well as this question answer session, would be very valuable for all our participants. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we can now uh, successfully close uh, today's proceedings. May I now request uh, architect Sharad Chopra, who is a member of the Northern Chapter and a critical member of the Sustainability Committee, who has been responsible in curating today's program, to please give the vote of thanks. Architect Sharad Chopra. Thank you, Arshanji. Uh, it is my proud privilege today to propose the word of thanks. And on behalf of the Sustainability Committee of the Northern Chapter of the Indian Institute of Architects, I'm immensely thankful to Vigmam uh, Savitri Woods for uh, being the sole sponsors for this today's event. And I uh, extend my warm thanks to Mr. Amit Pandey AVP Sales, Vigvam Savitri Woods for his wonderful presentation and for having introduced us to his unique products, the products of Vigvam uh, Savitri Woods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would also like to thank Griha Council for their continued support to the Northern Chapter IIA for hosting this event, which is the third edition in the series of awareness programs and their fourth event with the Northern Chapter. Also, I would like to thank the Haryana Chapter of the Indian Institute of Architects for joining hands with us today and supporting us to co-host this event. Uh, a special thanks goes out to architect Lovesh Kansal and architect Rishabh Jain, uh, who are the attendees of the previous IIA Griha uh, event, which was held in February 2020, for having shared their experiences here today with us, and which were not only informative, but also were very encouraging. And uh, for those who were unable to register today, uh, um, the next event, what we're going to have is the, which is the fourth edition of the again Saturday. Uh, for the uh, reasons that it's more, uh, you know, we can uh, spare some time, the architects can do that. And uh, looking forward to the participation, uh, active participation rather, from all. And I thank you once again, please. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Uh, I once again also like to extend a warm thanks to our own executive committee at the Northern Chapter, as well as my fellow supporters in the Sustainability Committee, architect Sharad Chopra and architect Roy Jain. Looking forward to seeing all of you at the next event, which is our one day awareness event as uh, sir pointed out on the 17th of April, as well as we have a training event which is scheduled with Priha throughout all the Saturdays, throughout the five Saturdays of May. 
So looking forward to seeing many of you there. Once again, thank you so much and have a very good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.